<laughs> it's, it's a record. It's a record. We we respond a 20 minute video in five minutes. Connecting. I don't know if that's gonna separate. Do we just... need to like refresh the chat? Uh, chat saying welcome back. Yeah, I'm not getting anything. Hang on, I'll just redo it. Um. Okay. Well, 385 people are here, so I guess I can restart the story of Jared. So anyway, Jared, he, he lost his mind, deleted his channel, made a new one, and said he is a man of substance, and that he is 32 years old, and he wants more people that are 32 years old just like him, which mm -hmm. I don't know why the fuck he would be so specific with that. Mm -hmm. But um, also, he, he really, also he really said, let it rip on rags, didn't he? Oh yeah, he shit-talked rags for a while, and uh... The, the Ballad of Jared, that's wonderful. Um, but uh, basically, Jared said that he wants more people that will like him, not ironically, but because he thinks that people will like him, you know, unironically, which is never going to happen. So, I mean, he's like, he said in, the, in his newest video, I'm okay, you know only 50 subs as long as they like me and it's like jared the only people that subscribe to you subscribe to you because <laughs> you're funny it's i mean you just gotta accept it kind of like tommy wiseau did yeah where it's like yeah. okay i think it's that exactly like that situation because tommy yeah. genuinely thought that he made like the next great stanley kubrick film and it's literally the worst movie ever made <laughs> yeah but but he understands that people don't actually unironically like his movie. Everyone that likes The Room likes it ironically. And that's how he got his fan base. And look look at where Tommy's at. He's at the top of the fucking world. Uh, Kevin Spacey can never make a movie again, and Tommy Wiseau's here at the fucking Golden Globes. That's that's the true, yeah. And, he, and he, from legit, there. he legit made a good film, right? Oh, yeah, Best he Friends did. was like... like actually unironically pretty good the thing is although it was not directed written or produced by tommy so that, I, that's I could the, genuinely have seen happening right that down the line jared hits like two thousand subs and then he makes like a video that actually has like a decent take on something and people are like you know this is actually decent like this is good you know and he'd start getting appreciation from people who aren't just looking at him as a meme but he said he, that's the weird thing he said he likes to be the butt of a joke when it's fun and stuff but he doesn't want to be a meme and i was like isn't that not the same kind of thing though it's like how does <laughs> yeah. that work? The, yeah the problem with jared is that he he hasn't gotten out of his tommy what he hasn't gotten out of the initial tommy wiseau phase he needs to get into the current tommy wiseau phase and just accept that he's a meme because yeah. people will actually follow him for that because that's what he does best is just acting fucking weird and making people laugh but he doesn't want that i mean that was the most subs he's ever had and he threw it away because he just, yeah, he's yeah and, of I don't know. and genuinely like <laughs> uh wolf will still cover him on his podcast the reason i'm not doing it here is because i i don't know he's like a time bomb and, he, and i i can just see it happen in the future where you just make a video and be like I am depressed and it's all because of the coverage from these guys' streams or something like that. So I'll just, I'm, I'm, I'll be safe and just be like, oh, fuck it. If he's going to be, he comes across a little bit like flip floppity, you know, because because he said like one thing and then just completely walk back on it in this new video and delete his channel, which to me, I'm like, whoa, he's willing to make some very crazy decisions instantly, you know, because the last we heard from I'm him was he was sure coming on the bipolar. stream. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he's bipolar because it's like he was like actually happy he was even like making parody videos i didn't watch him because I, I don't think that jared trying to parody himself would work out too well because i don't think you can parody a parody yeah yeah that was weird <laughs> that was strange but, but uh yeah but, that's um, that's to update you guys as to why i won't be here but it'll still be on wolf's and i assume that what we'll we you can do now wolf is just like find the very best per, per podcast isn't it instead of it's like whatever's new or whatever so i'm sure it'll yeah. be great means um, we'll have a lot less time to laugh and a lot more time to groan yes we have yeah. I, I figured since we're vaguely trying to be you know an actual competent podcast did did people vote in that straw poll 
I, I, I didn't. I haven't checked it yet. Yeah, they did. Yes, they did. Oh, they did. Every okay. frame of pause is the biggest one. We'll have to keep posting it throughout the stream for all of the people who pop in. But yes, vote in. We will decide on actually giving this a name. And let's say this is the first official doesn't have a name podcast yet, but um, it'll be me every time, more than likely Rags and Wolf every time, depending on who's free at what times. And then... Um, there was a huge miscommunication. So Raz can <laughs> and, th and then we'll have guests more than likely as well. And so Apabend, welcome to the to the stream. You're the first guest, honorary You're the first guest brown person. person on this show. Th that's also true. We have, we are a very diverse stream. Yes, I, I, I want to make sure to come in here just to make sure that Patrick Willems cannot criticize <laughs> you because you're white. I, I, I was so going to say, good. I figure it makes sense because you've made your video on Patrick Willems, so you'll be able to see the follow up. Yes. See, I don't. Have you seen this video yet? I haven't. I I've just, I've I seen the first two minutes and then I stop because I like uh, I like it when you get sort of like the initial blast of hilarity from this. But um, yeah, I've yeah. I've heard a lot as well, and the comment section's already turned on him. It didn't take very long. Like apparently he's making some really fantastic arguments. We got that to look forward to. There was I checked out some of the comments from the last video and uh, something that we probably should have mentioned in conclusion on Macintosh's video. Was that like the entire point of his video was how uh, we have this toxic expectation that to be a man is to essentially die to, you know, save the world sort of thing, and that the film sort of subverts that. And it's like we, I think we might have pointed out, but just the hilarity that uh, Holdo and Rose Tico's sister do those things exactly, and they're sold as like really heroic moments. So it makes you wonder, like, how does he reconcile that? But uh, yeah, a lot of people were like, "Why didn't you comment on that?" And it's like apparently we missed it, but um, very much. A, an overall criticism of his video that just makes it fall apart. Ooh, and uh, there are laughing at his fucking stupid voice. There are people who are very unhappy that we've been we've been doing this, uh, basically responding to videos and and the accusation there, there is there are more people unhappy that you didn't read read the super chat. Oh, I'll, I'll I I usually do them in a, in a row. Um, I still for anybody who's concerned, I've got the super chats from when I the stream like screwed up. We we've still got them. Uh, so. Yeah, I I'll try to read some of them. Some of them that are, they're around, they're already been posted. Cause cause there was a super, there's a bunch of super chat in your last stream. There's the one that failed. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry that, if I if I sad. miss any of those. That's my bad. But yeah, we we people have been saying that uh, Wolf Rags Muller are not supposed to be YouTube police. Uh, that's not what we're gunning for at all. We're no, literally just watching these videos. <laughs> like, oh really? I I'm sorry. I thought we were the YouTube FBI personally. But I guess. <laughs> No, we're not. We're not trying to be the police. What what it is is we watch these videos with you guys, and we're like listening to it. That's that's usually what I think is the biggest problem for these people's videos is they don't actually want you to really pay attention, because half yeah, the time yeah, it's kind of like the like if you've seen that meme on Twitter every once in a while, and it says what it's like to be watching a podcast, and it's like some lonely black guy eating cereal with a poster of a bunch of white chicks laughing. It's kind of like that. You're just like the lonely black guy that's eating cereal while watching three neck bearded YouTubers laughing at things. Exactly. And and by the way, shit the, the the reason we're covering this one first isn't because we hate Patrick Williams. This has been requested like crazy again. We just get like loads of PMs being like you have to cover it. And we it's like to cover Patrick is such an infinite source of stupidity. <laughs> that it's like yeah. impossible not to like address it. It is fun to uh to, to cover him and I've heard that there is a reference to me in this video so that, oh. that that's interesting as well um it's it's not Can't a direct reference that. it is it is a uh, I think I'm referred to as the angry guy who made five hours of ranting on on the last Jedi that's what I've heard he says man I wish I had like an air horn so I could like just do this <laughs> as soon as he says it because I know what the reference is um yeah so I got Nerds with a heart from Akiba Voorhees, so thank you for that. And The Last Jedi cries out in pain as it copyright strikes you, Bilbo Baggins, The Daily Sauron. So those are the two before the uh, the stream went down, I think. Hold on. There's one in the chat. It's not a super chat, but it's uh, Trix Rock is gay, Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> Bilbo Baggins says a lot of stuff, man. He gets around. Uh, have any That's of you ever covered a video? Have any of you ever covered a video where some cuck argues the sequel trilogy is basically an improved version of the OT? I swear you have, my crazy. I've I've not actually seen a video well, that, like that. That's pretty much every single one of these people, anyway. So it's like, well, they're they're all cucks, and they all think that the sequel trilogy is better than the OT or as good. So 
they all just kind of, you know, blend Oh yeah, together. there was there was a clip in my um the third part of my TLJ one where um I think it's New Rock Stars or Clyde at some channel like that where they said um let's be honest, the new films are just the old ones with better acting, better effects and better <laughs> something else and I remember being what? like, oh god. What? Yeah, what? I, I definitely threw wrong. it in cuz so I I think I just play the clip and go, no. <laughs> cuz this is like stop. Uh, Terry Crews as Siri. I'm pretty sure that's we, we'll we'll get to that, right? Like, I I perfectly agree. Like, I mean, if you want to make if you're gonna make Siri black, you gotta make it Terry Crews. I would watch the I mean, shit out of that. I mean, <laughs> yes, I, I'd watch it. I'd watch I mean, it. Give, why not? give him like some shitty white wig and just have him go, Yo, Carol, I'm gonna go kill them wild hunt niggas. It's like okay, and I mean, I'm okay with this Siri. This is the best iteration. Do, do we want to see him and Geralt hook up? That's my question. Um, I don't know. Well, as long as um, shit, I don't know who's gonna bottom. Superman and Terry Crews. That is an interesting, like you know. I think that'll be the final, the finale we, we for gotta, the season. We gotta have him like wrestle for it, you know. Oh yeah, there is. I have a second channel where I'm, I'm, I'm storing these podcasts. There's too many links. I gotta, I gotta make sure I have a link for Apple Ben's channel, and then also for the straw poll, and also for my second channel. I don't like podcasting. It's too much pressure. <laughs> Guys, isn't help. Wolf a cucked soy-based Trump hater? What? <laughs> Most people call me all right. I don't know where the fuck you're getting Ooh, that from. We got a comment on the last stream that said, um, uh, "Couldn't go be more than five minutes." Um, I hate Trump fans or something like that, and I was like. Did we wait? What did we mention Trump? Like I don't. I not that I remember, but I. It's also five hours, so it's hard to tell. <laughs> like, we don't know what we said after it's, an hour passes. It's like a, like I just got banned from Twitter for seven days for saying things that were deemed too right wing. I, mean, I don't get that. You have to keep reminding okay. people you vote for Bernie Sanders, don't you? Uh, I gotta keep reminding people that I'm not a Nazi, but you know, people will just make up whatever the fuck they want. Uh, they think I'm. It's funny because both sides hate me. I get one side that's like, "Oh, you're all right," and the other's one. The other one's like, "You drink soy because you hate Trump." And it's like I give credit to Trump more often than not. Okay. You drink soy. <laughs> no. You didn't join alt furry. That's why people hate you. Like, okay, there's only one thing I drink, and it's generally Pepsi. And I'm not seeing any soy on here. Diet Pepsi is filled with soy. We know this. Well, I don't drink Diet Pepsi because I'm not a uh, faggot. So. Regular Pepsi is also filled with soy. I'm pretty no, sure. It's not. I'm, oh, I'm looking at that's the... probably what it was. The Colin Kaepernick stuff that was talked about right at the beginning. I think. Because um, uh, I said it was really? fucking stupid to light your shoes on well, fire. Well, the interesting part was I just asked you guys what happened because I don't know anything about it. But apparently, that makes me a Trump supporter as well. So interesting. Um. But yeah, we got, uh, woohoo, finally catching a stream on a day off. Love you guys. Looking forward to five hours of fun. I hope you both available for five hours. <laughs> We've got nothing else to do in your lives. That'll be great. Uh, oh, wolf question. Aragorn versus Geralt fight. Who oh, fuck. Fuck you for making me have to answer that. Damn. Um, shit. I'd say, oof. Geralt only because he uses magic and Aragorn can't. Yeah. Otherwise, if it was a fair fight, then... Oh, fuck, that would be a... <laughs> well, Geralt gets his ass kicked a lot, so I'd say probably Aragorn if the fight was fair. Uh... Wolf, how's it feel knowing we know you're a pleb for dropping The Expanse before Episode 5? Well, I like The Expanse books, but I mean, I'm, you know, if the acting wasn't shit, if the effects weren't shit, if the soundtrack wasn't eh, if the... I don't know, the show's... The show like loosely follows the books and just has a real a lot of terrible effects. Like obviously the acting is abysmal because it's a fucking sci-fi show. So I haven't seen it, so I can't call him if he's if he's wrong on this. I'm just gonna have to say, I trust you, Wolf. You're probably one hundred percent right. And I'll never they watch the show thanks Miller. to that. They fucked up Miller. Best character in the whole first book, and they fucked him up. <laughs> Damn some fucking faggot with a shitty haircut. Uh, we've already got two left that, that we'll get started, so YouTube police would have to arrest Wolf for furiness. I'm not even 100% sure on... Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. We make some type of drinking game. I mean... Yeah. Every <laughs> every time we pause would kill you, so I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah? You, you, we're gonna have to leave it to the audience to come up with it, because, uh, you know, we're not creatives. We don't... Me, me and Wolf and Afban, we don't really make anything. Typically speaking, we just uh, we just sit here and uh, talk we into the void. We just leech off of other channels. Exactly that. That's a hundred percent it. 
A Harley Morenstein or Steins of Epic Meal Time has made an hour-long video telling people the last Jedi doesn't suck, we suck. I'd love to do a video on it. I don't know if we can do hour-long videos on this. Like, we'll never be able to complete an hour video, will we? Nah, nah. Oh no, so. that. Like, I don't. I still don't know how we're gonna do that TRO stream. Yeah, I know that's gonna be interesting. Because that's a that's two hours. We're gonna have to like. <sighs> well, no, because we can't cut off the long rags clips, because then that'll like hurt the ability to respond to their points. Every time Wolf sighs in <laughs> defeat, take a drink. <laughs> Wolf going like... <sighs> so anyway, uh, just, to, just to send out the three links that I actually do need to promote as, as a responsible podcaster. Straw Poll helps decide on what name we're actually going to name this thing. Um, our guest is Appaben, where you kind of have to subscribe, otherwise you're not really a true fan of this stream, because let's be honest, that's how it works. <laughs> and then nah, nah. And then this podcast will be stored on my second channel. So all three of those links, there you go. I'll probably have to do it again after I love how someone passes. asks where's dude when this isn't <laughs> <laughs> this this you realize you're watching Mauler's channel, right? So yeah, are we uh, is everyone happy to begin? I, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I'm like... not ha I'm not happy, but I will begin. <laughs> We've all we all know the Last Jedi very well, and it looks as if we're about to be schooled on why it's actually great by the um, racist himself. Hey man, Can't it's wait. not right. Uh, 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 not to sidetrack, but I think it was uh, H Bomber guy was asked on Twitter recently, why is it uh, racist? No, is it racist to say the Japanese people suck? Uh, but also not racist to say that white people suck. And then he said yes. And then I looked at like the responses, and I don't know, man, that side of the aisle, like they 100%, and I, I don't know what side of, it's like a giant circle, whatever side they represent, but they were all like, yeah, it's it's totally not racist to say anything bad about white people as a whole. And it's just like, how does that work? Is there, it, a, is that being updated in the dictionary yet that racism is about power as well as race? Because if that happened, I feel like there would be riots in the streets. <laughs> For changing the definition he, he's of still very way. salty because he's still very salty because the Japanese turned Sherlock Holmes to an anime. What? What? Is that a bad <laughs> thing or a good yeah, thing? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, they actually did, and well. he said it in one of his videos. And he's like, he's so he's got he got so fucking salty about it. Huh. Well, either way, I just don't I don't get the rules. I, I've talked about this with other people before. I was just like, if if they could just provide me consistent rules on this whole thing, then maybe I could get on board. But Seems like you, you, they contradict themselves quite a bit, so it, it gets confusing. Anyway, Patrick Willems has previously said that if you're a, a white critic, you won't have much to offer um, on black films, I suppose. He, obviously, the reference was Black Panther, so that won't be coming up here because yeah. there's plenty of people who are white in Star Wars, so we can still offer something. I think that's how that works. How often do you think he's going to tell us that because we're white, our opinions don't matter, as he's a white guy telling us? <laughs> that's the other thing people would point that, out. It's like, that, how does that, that work? That, that's why you have me here. That's why you might be here, so that I can validate you guys, that you guys, oh, thank <laughs> your God. opinions matter. You're, so basically, you're our brown knight. <laughs> <laughs> you shine a light in the darkness for uh, for when we're wandering around, wondering if we're racist or not. You, you are proof that we are not. So, uh... No. I suppose, let's begin. Previously on Patrick Explains. I thought you Ew. were finally on your way back to oh, the city. Skin. Wow, I feel so awake right now. It's 3 a.m. Do you think it's that tea he's been drinking? Is there Soy caffeine? tea? Wait, wait, pause it. Now I gotta see what the ingredients are to Barry's tea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have this soy in it. Are you serious? <laughs> well, I genuinely want to know because if it is, I I think that will be absolutely hilarious. Let's see. So it's strange to to bring in made in parents, Ireland. But I'm assuming that this is something he's done before. Otherwise, wouldn't this be very strange for the parents? I don't know. Berries tea. Why won't it show the ingredients? That's what I need to know. Uh, Wolf doing the important investigations. Well, you know, people need to know. True, it's true. Uh, I mean, if, okay, even 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 if it's not there, he can actually just pour soy milk in it. Yeah, Wolf. That, it doesn't prove well, anything. He, that is true because he did have that jug of milk with him in the last video we saw. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. 
I, no, wait, that's still not it. Shit. Um, come on, where's the ingredients? You'd think you just have this. Why well, are probably going to add the soy later? The shop. Here we go. Here's the red one. Uh, what the hell? Okay. Just go on with the video. I'll keep doing my. All right, you, my you continue the sleuthing in right. the background, I guess. Um, Trick. What's going on? Nothing. I just wanted to come back, see you guys, and have a chat. What's with the camera? Oh, I'm recording this so I can put it on the internet, obviously. I think we're ignoring the bigger question. Who's that person next to the camera? What's up? Oh, that's just my intern. How the Wait, hell? He has an is intern. Is mom Irish? Yeah, apparently. That's weird. That's uh, interesting. A lot of Americans seem to have been kids of people who have immigrated over, I guess. But I guess the dad is American, the the, the mum is Irish. I'm, I'm a little bit confused, though. I don't know. This is a bit of a strange Nation format. Nation traitor. Fair enough. Also, I, he has an I'm, intern. I'm not sure. I'm not... I'm not sure what this kit is supposed to represent. I'm assuming it, there's going to be a payoff, like... Or is this a format? Punchline? Maybe maybe it's a format that he runs where he, he, like, explains films to his parents or something like that? <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Is there it, soy in tea? <gasps> there is soy in it. Isn't it dependent <laughs> on what tea oh. you're, you're using? I guess. I don't know. It's Barry's teammate in Ireland. It's fascinating how invested you are in finding out. Well, I just really want to know. Because it would just be like the cherry on top. Like, well, I mean, the cherry on top would be if he's a Jew. This would be like the whipped cream. <laughs> the edge. Too, it's too little edge. You gotta crank it up, Wolf. How did he get an intern? Usually I'm here to talk about movies I think are underrated, that don't get the attention they deserve, but this one is different. I want to talk about the biggest movie of 2017, a movie that pretty much everyone who watches movies has seen. Is it the biggest movie of 2017? I'm, it probably is. I, I was, yes, yes. So I was just thinking yeah. like... Yes, it is. Would 2018's okay, then, biggest movie be... Then one correct thing, that that's... Would it be better. Infinity War would be the biggest of 2018, or is it someone else? Oh, undoubtedly. Hmm. And Probably it's Black Panther is the follow-up. Yeah, to Infinity War, Black Panther. I wonder if I wonder if it did better than the Last Jedi or not. Um, like overall, or even an opening box office. I'm not even sure, but yeah, fair enough. That's probably true then. Um, I want to talk about Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi, because for some reason, a whole lot of people don't like this movie. Yes, a lot of people <laughs> for, some, for reason. some reason. Yes, 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 they don't like this movie. It's, it's almost like he. It's almost like he doesn't know. Kind of like you know how he admitted to only talking to people he respects and likes, because he lives in an echo chamber. Like, I, you know what? I can actually say I understand why people like it, uh, because I've heard what they say about it. It's not necessarily accurate to the film every time, but I know <laughs> what time. I know my, what my, they I mean, say when sister, they say they like my, it. My sister likes it. Then again, she's dumb. Oh. And my brother did like it. <laughs> but no, then again, my, my he's brother, also my, dumb. No, no, my brother didn't like it. My little brother didn't like it because he saw and when when Admiral Akbar died, he was like he stood up on the on the theater and it's like he pulled his two middle finger on the screen. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I, not kidding. genuinely, like, I had missed it dude, on my first watch awesome. through. I missed it on my first watch through that they said Admiral Akbar died, and I was like, when I finished the film, I hadn't even thought about the fact that he wasn't there yet. And then I remember reading online that it's like they unceremoniously flushed him out the freaking ship, and I was like. Really? <laughs> like, I didn't even yeah. catch it. Yeah, he, he, he was so pissed in that. Like, he just he just stood up on the freaking theater. It's like, he throw his middle finger on the two screen. It's like, Jesus Christ, brother, chill. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy that they, at least, at least Akbar earned a throwaway line. At least that's what he, he got that, you know? What, what, did, what did the yeah. brand new character that nobody connected to at all, Holdo, get? It's like, she got probably one of the most self-sacrificial set pieces in the history of Star Wars. But, uh, just, it, you know, it could be him that sacrificed himself in there. Yeah, because I don't even necessarily defend the, the ramming maneuver, but fucking hell, throw Akbar in there instead of Holdo. Make Akbar the one who wouldn't tell Poe the plan, whatever. Why do you need Holdo? He could even scream it's a trap as he's flying it into the supremacy. Wait, a lot of people are saying F. Does that mean the stream is down? No, F, F just to repay respect for Akbar. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, F, F for Akbar. Why would you? The film didn't pay him respect. <laughs> No point. People are really angry about it. 
Now, instead of telling you why you should see it, since everyone watching this already has, I want to tell you why I love it. Because I do. <sighs> good I for you, this man. movie good, is good, goddamn good, impressive. Good, good for you. I was going to say, good for you. Man. Good for you. He, he can, this is, there's going to be a big difference when he tells us why he loves it. Is he going to cite things that actually happened, or is he going to make stuff up? Or is he going to change parts of the film? Or is he going to ignore parts of the film? Is he just going to say, I, I loved it? Because that's fine. You're welcome to love it. But when you start telling people stuff like, um, Poe didn't tell her the plan because... Well, she didn't tell Poe the plan because it makes total sense and I love it. It's like... Eh, this is really what? <laughs> like, this, this will be the interesting yeah, sort go, of go line on. crossed. Go, go on, Patrick. It is go easily on. the best Star Wars movie since The Empire Strikes I'm, Back I'm, and I'm, today... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? I missed that. I'm sorry, what? I missed that. What? I missed that. I'm, I'm sorry, what? I missed that. He, he, he <laughs> talked about Empire last time. I missed that. A lot of people are really angry about it. Now, instead of telling you why you should see it, since everyone watching this already has, I want to tell you why I love it. Because I do. I think this movie is goddamn incredible. It is easily the best Star Wars movie since The Empire Strikes Back, and today... No, 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 wrong, 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 So he's wrong, saying it's better than wrong, Return of the Jedi, wrong, all the prequels, wrong, Force Awakens, wrong, Rogue One, wrong, and Solo. That, that... <laughs> I will watch. I'd rather watch the. <laughs> I'd rather watch the Ewok Adventures movies than watch the Last Jedi again. Because at least like the Ewok Adventures movies were so bad, it was like kind of funny. Because, the characters like... will be given respect in the Ewok movie. <laughs> At the very least, it was just funny to watch a bunch of little teddy bears beat up Tusken Raiders that were on Endor for no reason. It's it, it's fun to see Ewok watching porn. Why wouldn't you just say I like it more than uh, all the other movies? Why do you have to say it is better than everything since? We're just like okay, make it harder to but, but, follow but, but, along. But seriously, but sure. Patrick, do go on. Do yeah. go on. Talk do go on. About why. <laughs> So just to clarify, by the end of the video, we will ask ourselves, did Patrick explain why The Last Jedi was great? Uh, Good question. It'll be interesting to see if we get there. So I realize I already lost a lot of you right from the title of this video. Don't worry, we're gonna stay. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go through the whole video, no, no, buddy. No, 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 no. As, as, as Rag said, as Rag said, if you actually tell me that The Last Jedi is good, I'm gonna be like, Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, all right. <laughs> this is the thing. This difference between us three and Patrick Williams, or you know, us three rags and whoever else, and Patrick Williams and whoever else. It's like we will actively look for the opposite perspective because we want to hear it instead of just yes. being like, no, I am above that sort of thing. I shan't be looking at people I do not have respect for. It's like, all right. Some of you are only here because this showed up in your recommendations, and you wanted a new opportunity to tell a stranger about why you hate this movie, but I just want to say something right up front. If you are a person who thinks that SJWs, or diversity, or feminism ruined this movie... Yes. Um, I wouldn't say it's <laughs> yes. anywhere near yes. that simple. There's a shit ton of things that ruined the movie. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. they, they, they were all problems, but they weren't everything that destroyed the movie. How you classify, yes, like... Yes, yes, but, but do go on. Yes, but do go on. I was just gonna say, it's just... Or like, if you're going to tell me that I... It's just, yeah, there's, there's so many things wrong with it. Like, those things could be lab labeled that, that encompass a huge selection. But, um... I, what, what did he say that he would say to the people who say that, though? SJWs, our diversity, our feminism ruined this movie. Or if you're going to tell me that I'm a Disney shill. Or if you're going to tell me that I should watch <laughs> yeah, five you, you are. <laughs> Oh, I think that's my bit right there. I think he's about, to, he's about to mention me. Our feminism ruined this movie. Or if you're going to tell me that I'm a Disney shill. Or if you're going to tell me that I should watch a five-hour rant by some angry guy on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, oh, shout out! Shout out! Oh, shout out! I am I the angry have, have ranting Mario man. death song every single time that he says something <laughs> stupid. You just fucking oh, ripped that from DP. That. That's where you got that from. What? Oh. Remember, remember they used to play that for uh, whenever Vigilant Christian came on? That's where I got the idea <laughs> from. I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's think of a... Uh, because I can't do air horn. Well, I guess I can do air horn. Ah, uh, I, I do have air horn. 
I will okay, happily. I'll, I'll I'll do the Mario. You do the air horn. We'll make it together. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if you guys have seen all, all all those videos I made, but like the rage one is angry. Sure, it's, it's, it's in the title, but the critique one I was I was pretty calm throughout most of it, and it was very scripted. Like I was very descriptive. I wasn't exactly going blah 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 blah. But uh, I guess I am some angry guy. Which, by the way, gives us an insight into people like him and Macintosh. Where you know when they say like the angry fans. I want to criticize them, not the ones who just didn't like it. And it's like, I guess we slot in there, even if we explain ourselves, you know, very slowly and very calmly. It's like, no, we're still the angry ones because we didn't like it. That's how it works enough. I mean, you could probably find a part of that five hours where I sounded angrier than normal, but still, you know. Well, look, I'm happy because at least my hairline isn't that bad. Oh. <laughs> That is an ad homonym. You just said his arguments are bad because of it because of his hairline. It's like I didn't no, say that. <laughs> no, he didn't. It's okay, guys. Calm down. He didn't. He's just being a dick. <laughs> it's okay. Um. So yeah, uh, I am the angry man. I will have to accept that. I think. Or if you're going to tell me that I'm a Disney shill, or if you're going to tell me that I should watch a five-hour rant by some angry guy on YouTube, or if you think I should kill myself because I liked a movie, do people? Hang on. Kill yourself because you liked a movie. I don't think it's. I would, nah. I, I don't think people would be saying that. <laughs> Have fun there, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, he said something stupid. I, like I said. Because if you legit. If people are saying to die because you like something, it's like, yeah, they're, they're probably not people you should give much time, personally speaking. It would be go, go both ways. Yeah. If people are saying you should die because you didn't like it, you know, same thing. Oh, this is gonna be long. Really care that much about Star Wars? Yeah, Mom, they really do. But everyone should just remember. Oh my God. This is a film about space wizards intended for children. So why have you created in, in three videos? For children. <laughs> why intended is he intended for children? Is it? Yeah, that's the other thing. Intended, I would say, for everyone, not children. Isn't the whole point that Star Wars appeals to a mass audience, not just children? Well, here's here's the thing. He's ripping that line from George Lucas and just being like, uh, you see, even George Lucas says it's for kids. It's like, well, let's, first off, this is an idiotic argument because just because a film is for kids doesn't mean it has the right to suck because <laughs> Lion King, Treasure Planet, Atlantis, uh, How to Train Your Dragon, all incredible films Pixar. that are all directed towards younger audiences. Yeah. Pixar, older yeah. Disney, not new Disney. New Disney sucks, but you know. Um, and then just because it's a kids' movie doesn't mean it's like, oh yeah, it, it, it gets to and suck. This right here is why it takes so long to debunk bullshit compared to how long it takes to generate it, right? So he puts that sign up and then he moves on. But we've got so many counter arguments. First being that just because it's a kids' thing doesn't mean that you don't care about the writing. That's even insulting to kids. Like, and by kids, I'm assuming. Yes. We're talking about people as as old as let's say fourteen. You'd still be be a kid at that point, right? It, it, you just devalued your own movie in there. Yeah. Like if, if you can't, <laughs> you can't just say that your film is just oh oh th this film is it's actually just for kids, guys. You guys just need to relax. And like that. It's like <sighs> wouldn't wouldn't the mob the MCU be the same audience intention as Star Wars as a saga as well? Or is or that you say yeah. that they're a bit more adult? I'm not sure. Well, I would say they were a bit more adult in Iron Man yeah. one, then they like kind of lost their balls right immediately after that. And... Well, look at the look at when Luke sees his aunt and uncle's bones. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. When when Anakin's <laughs> implied to have slit down freaking a bunch of kids, like I don't know. It, it, to me, I'm just like, oh yeah, this is just the exact same thing as the Lego Movie. You know, it's it's just like that. Oh yeah, you know, five year olds watching Anakin slaughter a bunch of five year olds. That's totally kid oriented <laughs> and once you move from that argument you move on to but hang on you're telling people to stop getting so angry and like you're gushing about it so one side of the emotions is okay but the other side isn't it's like that doesn't seem very consistent it just looks like you're just policing people about how they should feel yes because yeah, and, and like really telling humans how much they should care about something it's historically doesn't work very well like humans don't like it yeah, let's go on. Of course. I'm not saying you shouldn't take it seriously, just uh, maybe... You kind of do. What is it? You, you, you kind of <laughs> do. It's it's a kid movie, calm down. Also, take it seriously. You're like, what? We, 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 what? Well, <laughs> well, my brother didn't take it seriously and he got pissed off. <laughs> I'm confused. What is he trying to say? Let's just back it up because he's saying to, he's not saying to not take it seriously. He's saying intended for children. I'm not saying you shouldn't take it seriously. Just maybe 
don't get too angry about it. We're not. Don't get too angry about it. Don't get too angry. Are we allowed to get too happy? <laughs> Is there such a thing as too happy? Because I'm assuming that's what this comes down to. It's it's a matter of you can feel positively, but you cannot feel negatively. But I I I don't see like 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 that five hour video. I, I don't see her being angry at all. I mean, you're just explaining. Well, like, I made why it. The film it's is five bad. hours, like, so I must have been angry to make something like that. It couldn't well, be that you I had were an, definitely I, <laughs> angry when you were like that dishonored wolf guy. <laughs> his, his Thor Ragnarok I mean, I mean, video was honestly terrible. Had no cogent arguments. At that was, all. you know, I was very angry. And I shouldn't get that angry about a movie <laughs> that's meant for children like Thor Ragnarok. Exactly. Thank you, Patrick. Thor was. I mean, honestly, Thor Ragnarok was more child oriented than the Last Jedi. Look. I think what we can take from this is the you know when you you sign up or you book to go see a movie as you walk in Patrick will be standing there and you go can you just how how invested am I allowed to be and then he's like it's a seven on this one seven out of ten you're like thank you man just just to now I wonder what objective lens he gets that one from because <laughs> because you you know why he feels like he's on the upper end of this one he's like calm down don't get so angry and I everyone's like haha true so I, I don't get it on the emotional scale for the people who are going nuts like Patrick talking about how it's incredible it's great the visual language the subtext the lessons it teaches of humanity and you have like a five year old like huh eh? uh. <laughs> he's like oh right it's not meant for you I guess sorry I, I, it's it's very interesting that he said that I yeah you shouldn't be angry about this like like I'm not even a Star Wars fan like I'm not a Star Wars fan like I could see, like that film is fuck it's, <sighs> last year was terrible <laughs> like I'm not even a Star Wars fan like I am the sort of demographics like you know when when people bring up Star Wars uh back the new the new episodes came in like episode seven episode seven came in it's like it was intended for like to bring people go back to Star Wars like hey Star Wars exists like hey come here star wars is back again it's like i'm one of like one of the newcomers like their target audience like but even i was like okay seven was uh, and then you have rogue one which uh. I, I gotta say rogue <laughs> one is the best the best out of all of them but it was still uh. and then you have last jedi which was just uh, even uh, and then you have solo <laughs> and the the air starts get really lazy, like. Eh. Then it's like, oh, you don't even care anymore. All right, yeah. Patrick. Now that you've now that you've you've dashed all of the evil haters, let's let's hear some of these arguments, shall Thor we? Thor was child oriented. Oh my God, your hammer pulled you. Up. Oh, okay, you got a point there. Now, I forgot about that. Well, that's this is the thing though. I was I was clarifying if. If Star Wars is, is oriented to children, surely the MCU is as well, because they have... I, I, I think what Wolf is trying to say is that Tolf, uh, Thor Ragnarok is a lot more childish. Oh, I agree. In terms of the humor. They even, in like, the they make light of all the dramatic things that happen. They're like, la la la, yeah, you it, know. Th that's more what I was going for, like, the kind of tone throughout the movie, can, whereas Last Jedi was more serious. Even you can it was have terrible. adult jokes hidden in kids' stuff, though. Like, this is the thing. I True. But it's, it's a pointless yeah, thing to even been. talk about because we enjoy children's stuff stuff that was clearly meant for children because you can make it good you can tell a good story you don't it's implied with with what he said that you need sex violence drugs and whatever else to tell a story that's interesting for adults it's like no you don't you really don't you can literally be a story about friendship and that's it shrek what are people referencing shrek now yeah i i think shrek is good I know there's memes, but... Yeah, it has tons of adult jokes in it. Shrek 2 is good Shrek shit, too. Shrek 2 is the best. Shrek 3 is the worst. And Oh, God, yeah. And, and this is the thing, like, it, it, what does yeah. it mean to... What if I took Shrek seriously and talked about how good I thought that was, writing-wise? Adventure Time, you know? I, I don't really... I wish, I wish he was here so I could be like, Patrick, what does that mean, though? What are you saying? When people celebrate how well-written something like Wally or Incredibles or Monsters, Inc. is, are you like, oh, God, calm down? It's a kid's thing. Because you, you do it to the negative side, but do you do it to the positive side? Do you, do you keep that consistent? Probably not. Eh. Eh. Please do a five-hour analysis on Shrek. <laughs> about a movie about space wizards intended for oh children. Oh god, he does it again? What Didn't he just do that, or did we rewind? Hang on. Eh. You did rewind. Or maybe this is a film about space wizards intended for children. Yeah. I'm not saying you shouldn't take it seriously, just maybe don't get too angry about it. We're not talking about gun control here. We're talking about a movie about space was... 
Ah, he, he, does uh, do it twice. Uh, oh, he did do it twice. And he said that you're he, he's basically saying you can care about politics, but you can't care about media. Come on. Politics is one thing, but media. This is a kid's movie for space was But remember, Patrick's politics include hating white people. So I don't understand this at all. <laughs> like, it's so confusing to keep track of. I think it comes down to he's going to use this argument against the people who are making counterarguments to the film to try and bat them off, but he won't. He won't uh, allow it to be applied to himself. Simple. People as that. in the chat are pointing. Are, Rightfully pointing out, what is gun control? How is that even a good analogy? <laughs> like like I said, what, I'm assuming he's talking about politics. He's got to be. That's his point. That you you should be serious about politics. You shouldn't be serious about media. I guess that's what he means. Even yeah. though he's very serious about media, he has a whole career based on it. So I don't understand. You should be less angry about it. That's what he said. <laughs> so, Birth control said, uh, is on the same level of criticism yeah. for Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just saw that. that was great. Oh, Patrick. Wizards intended for children. Anyway, it sucks that I feel like I have to say that, and it's probably not even worth wading into this shitstorm anyway, but honestly- Oh, what? So now he's like, I probably shouldn't have said that because there'll be counter-arguments. Yeah, 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 just- <laughs> Just, just, just go on. Just go on. Why, why do you like this film? <laughs> just, I just this, this like fucking five minute disclaimer. <laughs> Please leave me alone. Love this movie. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's all. That's all this is. That's all it ever comes down to. I just love this movie. That's it. And I want to talk about it. Okay, but if you talk about it on a public space, expect people to talk back. That is how this works. So. The disclaimer, you may as well just start the video here, to be perfectly honest with you, but hey. Before I start talking about The Last Jedi, oh God. I need to quickly run through- wait, wait, wait a second, he was talking to his parents this whole time, right? I don't know if that's what's actually happening, or if he filmed those bits, like, separately. Because... So, like, like his parents were just, like, standing there. <laughs> like, sitting there. <laughs> he was just like, Mom, Dad, shut up and watch me make this video. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I don't know if they're gonna be replying, or if they're just for jokes. So I guess we'll find Bad out. Jokes. To my history with Star Wars, Wars because Milo. context matters. I True. mostly love the original trilogy. I think the prequels are generally not good, even if they contain some cool ideas. I think The Force Awakens is pretty <coughs> good. Yeah, it plays things super safe and basically just hits all the beats from A New Hope, but the movie had to do three things. It had to feel like Star Wars again, it had to introduce new characters that we wanted to follow into future movies, and it had to bridge the 30 year gap in. <laughs> It had to bridge the three year gap. Well, I guess it failed in that regard, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, in the sense that, like, we skipped the bridge part and went to the other side. I'm sorry, but if I was to compliment The Force Awakens, I would never cite that it bridged the gap. It didn't bridge any gap, it practically skipped the gap. Yeah, wouldn't, like, The Force Unleashed, which is intentionally supposed to be, okay, this is what happened between three and four work more as a bridging the gap part. This is skipping the gap. This is on the other side of the gap. Yeah, I don't I don't understand how you could possibly assume bridging the gap between between what? Like the OT and itself? Cause what else would it connect to? I don't even know what he's trying to say with that anyway. I don't think he understands what bridging the gap means as a phrase. <laughs> It had it's to amazing. bridge the 30 year gap in the story. It did ridiculously well at the first two. And with the third. Oh, okay. It did okay. It's a no, it, it didn't do anything. No. At, hey, at least. Oh, at God. least he said that it wasn't great in that regard. At least. <laughs> at least he said that it, it, it wasn't great. I, obviously, we, we would consider it to be a complete and utter sham, but he's saying it wasn't great. It's a little frustrating that we don't really know what the political landscape of the galaxy is and how the Republic works and what the significance of the Hosnian That's system being destroyed thing. actually is. Yeah. Hmm. But I also get that they wanted to return to a familiar dynamic. I don't need to see Snoke, a Star Wars story, to understand who that guy is and what his deal is. As if, it Im as if you need a whole movie to be able to explain a character. We, we still don't know who he is, <laughs> even after the second film. Well, I guess, I guess he's film. saying that we don't need to know at all. Like, it's really sad because he's he's one of the few villains that actually have potential to actually be, you know, like the the overarching villain for the entire well, thing. But now we have only Kylo again. The interesting like, thing, 
is that a, a handful of people will say that Palpatine was, you know, very underdeveloped in the OT, that we don't get quite uh, quite a lot for him, and yet he's w got way more of a character than Snoke did. So it's like, talk about super underdeveloped, and I don't get people who are like, we didn't need a huge backstory for this villain, and it's like, we never get huge backstory. Like, what was the backstory for Count Dooku? What was the backstory for Darth Maul? You know, and only including the films. Because I guess Mace Windu. We Windows... don't need a backstory. We need a story. Which is, like, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, just give us any reason to understand why they're here and they have what goal. Like that. Like all we needed to know about Darth Maul was that he was uh, evil. Darth. Uh, well, yeah, that he was, <laughs> he was Darth, Darth Evil. Darth Apprentice. <laughs> Darth Evil. Um, all we needed He's to know about Dooku was that he was a. Uh, he was a former Jedi. Yeah. And that he got seduced by Sidious. All we needed to know about Sidious was that he was a Sith and he's evil. And that's really all there needs to be. The problem with Snoke, the difference here is that Snoke just comes out of nowhere when the last time we saw any of these characters, the galaxy was at peace. So where he came from makes no sense because the last time we saw any of these characters, it was the Sith were defeated completely. So where did this guy come from? Is he a Sith? I mean, he brought it up, the bridging the gap thing, and it's like, Snoke is absolutely the, probably the most important component for bridging the gap, because he's the guy who changed everything. He, he reignited the Empire, and he turned Kylo, and ended up getting the Jedi destroyed. So that's, the entire positive faction have been destroyed by Snoke. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait a, a second. He, he showed, he showed his, he showed uh, Snoke on a video. Maybe he'll try, he'll explain it. Maybe, Someone maybe. said, uh, Darth Evil, a Star Wars story. <laughs> I would watch it. And what the significance of the Hosnian system being destroyed actually is. There is but I no... also get that they wanted to return to a yeah, familiar just... dynamic. I don't need to see Snoke. You know what was a familiar dynamic? A good film. <laughs> what? what? Oh. So you're doing it for the sake of making oh. it familiar? Like, what? <laughs> they're, they're, they're doing it for the sake of making it same like the original trilogy. I mean, they got to get the old fans back. That's the point. Dark Helmet Strikes Back. <laughs> I'd watch that. Star Wars story to understand who that guy is and what his deal is. Mm -hmm. So now that The Force Awakens had brought Star Wars back to the thing that we loved and was no longer two hours of Hayden Christensen green screened into ugly CGI, where did we go? Gotta, gotta get those prequel jabs in there. It's almost like a, see guys, The Last Jedi's still better than them though. It's so. a guy... Patrick, just because the prequels suck doesn't mean that The Last Jedi doesn't. Stop using that as an argument. <laughs> no, okay, look, yeah, there are a lot of people that are saying now that, um, that the prequels are good, and they aren't, and they're wrong when they say that they aren't. However, it, just because people are saying that doesn't mean The Last Jedi is excused from criticism because the prequels exist. Like, I that, do want to watch the prequels. By that logic... <laughs> By that logic, then we should excuse the fact that the Hobbit movies are terrible because the Lord of the Rings is great. True. What? Sort of. I mean, it's just backward logic anyway. Um, but this is the thing. We still haven't actually, like, started the video yet, really. This is all still, still... But, you know, we're nearly there, hopefully. I'm wondering if he's going to pull out a fucking piece of card again, too. Here. We've got all this set up. We've got a hell of a cliffhanger ending. So what comes next? A lot of people had a lot of demands for this movie. Explanations and answers and confirmations of fan theories and... Look. I like how that oh, gets, wow, wa we, that we gets waved off. We expected to get answers? It's just like, the answers create stakes. Yes. The answers create the world. Like, what is... Why is this such a, like, crazy demand from the fans now? Why is that I mean, looked at as crazy when JJ was the one who made us ask the questions in the first place? I mean, really, the only thing that he... I hate this argument that people keep bringing up where it's like uh, fans are just angry because they didn't get their fan theories. Like anyone that knows anything about fan theories knows that fan theories in every situation are 99% inaccurate. Yeah, I was going to say, so it's like, you know, there's a shit ton of fan theories everywhere I mean, all over we, the place. Jar Jar Binks is Snoke, you know, like that. There's, they're, they're all over the place. If people were that... Uh, you know, attached to fan theories, then every single movie everywhere would get hated on just because of that. But that's the thing. No one cares that much. You're applying too much credit to something that no one really cares about. You know what I look at it as is you have a birthday coming up and then your parents are like, what do you want? And you go surprise me. And then 
instead of picking you up that video game you wanted or maybe some shoes you were after or a ticket to go to a place that you really want it's just an empty box and they're like aha and you're like oh yeah that's a surprise it subverts expectations guys but <laughs> like you're just sitting there like i mean i guess i asked for a surprise so wow and you get this this immediate sense of do you hate me? <laughs> like, why, why would you do this? And then Ryan Johnson's like, no, I just hate Star Wars. And be like, oh, okay, I understand. Um, yes, being hyperbolic, but it's 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 just I I would like to hear a better argument for how this is all caused by false expectation, because um, it, it just it almost seemed like a cop out that they didn't have to do more work, you know, balance more of the I like make everything fit more. Because if you just say that there is no answer to Snoke's origin, Ray's origin. Um, whatever else, then every th you you don't actually need to do anything other than just tell whatever story you wanted to do in the Last Jedi. Which, as we found out, that he got rid of the notes from J.J. Abrams, that uh, Ryan Johnson clearly did come in wanting to tell his own story. Which, there you go. Like he doesn't care what the first and third movie was in the trilogy, and he certainly doesn't care about the older ones. He just wanted to make his art. And that pissed people off. I made a whole video about that. But personally, those weren't really my top priorities. I just wanted something new. I didn't want another beat-for-beat -beat repeat of the original trilogy. I wanted Star Wars to surprise me. Uh, they kind of did do some of that, though. They kind of did. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch they of stuff they redid. Did. So, not sure where he's getting that from. Yeah. Like, I guess he's going to argue that they may have copied a few things, but they had it end differently, so... That's I mean, a bank robbery is surprising doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they, they appreciate that concept because they it's rare that we get told why it's good. It's just, ah, but it's different. To expand the scope of what a Star Wars movie could be. And also, of course, I wanted a rip-roaring good time. And that is exactly what I got. Right from the... Hey, so it looks like we're going to begin the actual arguments now. You guys ready? This is going to yeah. actually involve references to the film. This is where it's going to get interesting. Okay, get Opening the Mario is... soundtrack ready. You're gonna, you're gonna piss everyone off if you keep using that. <laughs> yes. And that is exactly what I got. Right from the opening scene, I could tell something was unique about this movie. The movie begins with a space battle that is seriously Ooh. one of the best space battles in the Oh, okay. Please give me uh, a reason. Uh, okay. go, go, go on, go on. Entire ...series, but near the end, it does something amazing. Okay. In Star Wars, we've seen a lot of battles, and in those battles, we've seen a lot of random rebel pilots die. But I've never really cared about them. No disrespect. You didn't care about what? Porkins? <laughs> I guess. What? Uh, I mean, so you, I guess he didn't care about Biggs. Um, wait, wait. Why would you care about the rebels that died in the Last Jedi? Like they're about as equally not as developed. Like just because what? you don't know their names, their history, or how they even came to be in the positions they are, doesn't mean you shouldn't care about them, sir. What is wrong with you? Is it because they're women that you don't care about them? Jesus! <laughs> we never really cared about them. No disrespect to Biggs and Porkins, but oh, they go. were never really characters. How dare you? But The Porkins Last Jedi the best. shines a spot. Hang on, he said they were never okay. really characters. How are these guys characters exactly? Yeah, exactly. That's her name exactly? Asian it's pa number two? It's Paige Tico, and I know that because everybody wanted her to be in Rose's place. Because she's more attractive. Oh, that is. That is uh, because because that is obsolescent. That is it's a weird. I'm just saying, it's your reason. <laughs> because it's 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 Rose's sister. Mm -hmm. Because That's Rose's why. sister is more attractive oh, than Rose. Is that going to be her character oh. that she was Rose's sister? I wonder. Rose's hotter sister. Light on Paige Tico, and for two minutes she becomes the star of the movie. Paige's desperate what? attempt to. That's what? not. I'm she sorry. Didn't. Okay. You... <sighs> How exactly do you learn about her like, character from this selection of- she's just trying to activate a remote. That's uh, it, yeah. I don't understand, like, give me- give me something here, come on. To drop the bombs is more suspenseful and more emotional than anything in a- Yeah, you keep saying that that's what it is. No references. Battle scene since Luke's trench run. And as the How movie is reached- that as epic <laughs> as Luke's trench run? I just- Wait, just, just saying it. it. Look, it's all, it's all opinion. We're not going to get anything about the looks of things, but yeah, I, I'm surprised because I was just confused from the get go watching this scene. I remember being so thrown out by the bombers in general. I was just like, what in the hell are these things? And then like, 
how they drop and how the TIE Fighters just allow the last bomber to destroy the Dreadnought instead of destroying it. I was so confused because, you know, you could get a triple kill on bombers with half a TIE Fighter. So I, There's a significant design flaw in the bombers. Very significant. There's several significant design flaws, but sure, which, which one are you uh, thinking about? Man, I don't know. Like, the fact that it's very easy to destroy. Yeah, that would be one. I like the, uh, the flaw where pretty much any bomber that loses its payload is pretty much gonna kill itself because by the time the first bomb hits the last bomb is still in the fucking ch chamber so they just chain up and destroy it anyway um yeah how slow they are is hilarious the size and like lack of shielding or armor it's it's just a bizarre design and from what we see in the actual film it's just like why would anyone pay to make these things the fact that it takes like a hundred bombs to do what two Y-Wing bombs could do just as easily in the OT. And we saw in Rogue One, the Y-Wings could disable temporarily uh, the Star Destroyers, and then we see it from the Ion Cannon in um, in Episode 5. And it's like, wouldn't that have just been just as good? You just disable the, the Dreadnought and get out if that was your only goal, was to get out. Instead, you sacrifice like half your team. In fitness, they destroy it. It's just so many conflicts in your head just thinking about why the hell was this the story it's like oh just ignore it enjoy the Since emotional the bombers power. are so useless they could have just had one of them jump into light speed right through the um dreadnought oh and those those bombs well as red light media highlighted it's like why wouldn't you just fire them like missiles yeah. if they're that good that they yeah. just they just damage on impact it's like i mean the tie fighters had trouble shooting the incredibly slow moving deployment of them so you could probably get away with just shooting them i think but <sighs> this shot, I thought, holy shit, I've never seen this in a Star Wars movie. I thought, he, I thought he bleeped his swear words. Maybe he missed that one. Or I guess, he, I don't know. Four. And I've noticed a lot of people don't wow, know Wow, I've that. never seen they a bad Star Wars thing. movie before. Yeah, neither, none of us did. <laughs> but <before>. he <laughs> clearly referenced the prequels. I'm confused things in their Star Wars, and I think that's kind of a bummer. One of the reasons I love The Empire Strikes Back is that it's constantly surprising. The characters grow and change, it shows us amazing new planets and creatures, it changes our conception of Star Wars. And the most disappointing- <laughs> I'm just waiting for- okay, it, just a movie where it opens up, is Star Wars Episode Nine, and it's just a guy getting some coffee in like, just, just a, just a normal last place in real life, and then he does his taxes, and then it ends, it's like, that opened up what we consider to be a Star Wars movie. Someone in the chat said, did he just swear at his parents? Because, <laughs> <laughs> remember, they're sitting right across from him still. But yeah, fair enough. The thing about Return of the Jedi is how it doesn't really do that. It mostly gives us a lot of things we've seen before, like a Death Star or Tatooine. Its big new additions to the mythos are a forest and the revelation that Stormtrooper helmets can be played as drums. <laughs> Okay, are we doing the whole, uh, see, Revenge of the, the Everything Sucks compared to The Last Jedi, and that's why it's good. I'm just like, you know, it. Uh, I would never concede that Return of the Jedi is, is worse than The Last Jedi, nor the prequels, so I... But apparently it added nothing new. His, his like, requirements here are whether or not it added something new. It's just like, does it... Do, is there anything more than that? Like, is it more complicated than that, or is it just that? Return of the Jedi is significantly better than any of the films. Any of the newer films. Well, I mean, I agree with that, but apparently he he doesn't like it because all it added was that you can drum Stormtrooper helmets. I mean, how much new shit did done? Return of the uh, Return of the King add to um, anything from yeah, the I first two Lord of the Rings? Again, I, I don't no, get not really his point. much. I, just, I don't get how it works. Why does it have to add something to be good and? Why is that the determiner of whether it's good? Cool. But The Last Jedi isn't content to recycle Star Wars' greatest hits and just revisit old planets and reveal that everyone is related to someone that we've met before. It didn't have to be that she was related to somebody we know. It just needed to be something that makes sense. I mean, they're gonna answer a question instead of just nobody. And she's just super powerful because we've reestablished how the Force works now, and that is, if you're a, a broom boy in some area, you'll also be as powerful as Rey, as long as you've... Uh... Why? 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 Why do you have to make it about this instead of talking about what actually happens? It, you know, like, explaining where Snoke came from? It wouldn't matter if Snoke was just some janitor on a spaceship. We would be like, yeah, I don't care where he came from. But uh, his history literally makes the story or breaks it. 
So like if you just told us Don't he was kill him early on. if he was Palpatine's apprentice this whole time, we'd be like, Well, where the hell was he? And it's like, Okay, no, he's not that. He's uh he's Palpatine's boss. And you're like, Well, where the hell was he? And you go, Okay, he's um he's a he was a competitor to Palpatine that Palpatine nearly killed and he, he went into the shadows. He's not Darth Plagueis though, we'd be like, Okay. So he came back once Palpatine was dead, and it's like these these things just just they connect the stories. They actually bridge the gap. And why do they, why do we need to know? It's because Snoke did everything, and it's like why do we need to know about Rey? It's like well, if we don't find out why she has so much power, it kind of makes it really hard to be invested in it with the whole kills everything first try sort of bullshit. Yeah, if we don't know the history between the characters, like we just don't really care about them. Like the way Snoke. Like the reason why Snoke is becoming like the biggest powerful entity in the galaxy, we don't really know why or how. It's like he said, bridging the gap, kind of okay explained. I'm. So, it is interesting to me that he has like this idea of bridging the gap. He actually criticized TFA for it, but then simultaneously doesn't give a shit about who or what Snoke is. Like that seems yeah. to be a conflict to me. But there we are. It has a story to tell and a mythology to expand. I love that this movie finally shows us how the 1% live in this galaxy. It finally has someone use the force to switch on a lightsaber. It finally gives us an idea of what Obi-Wan meant when he said, you Strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. What? what, what? Oh wait, no. Wait, wait, wait. Oh what? no. He's arguing Wait, what? that the lightning from Yoda explains what Obi-Wan was talking about when he said, I'll become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Even though that's what the Force ghosts were. That that was him becoming more than just human. That was the point. I'll just, I'll just replay it for you guys if you didn't quite get it. Lightsaber. It finally gives us an idea of what Obi-Wan meant when he said, you Strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. You guys get that? You follow it along? <laughs> it. I still don't get it. So, just to clarify, by the way, the 1%, not the upper echelon of class in Star Wars, wouldn't that just be, like, the people in Naboo who were, like, royalty, or the people... Like, Palpatine was the 1%, surely. Uh, the Jedi, kind of up there. That was There was a class system going on. We saw the slaves. We, saw, we know classes already uh. existed. La wouldn't Lando technically count as one of the one percent? I suppose. I guess it's different for every planet because they all have different ecosystems or whatever. But it is interesting, by the way, because I think some people in chat are picking up on it. The fact that you referred to them as the one percent, it's almost like, hmm. See, seeing a bit mm. of a drip feed of politics there. We'll see if he mentions that again. But yeah, I like the way he slips that in, though. Like, by the way, you know this thing that people have a huge problem with? Yoda fucking firing lightning? It actually makes complete sense because it's what Obi-Wan was referring to. It's like, no, <laughs> no, stop. If Obi-Wan was referring to that, why wouldn't he have used it? That's, <laughs> just stop it, stop it. It gives us great new force also, abilities that, that he feel liked, like natural extent. All of the things that he liked are very like irrelevant things. I don't really care if Star Wars like show the one percent side. Like just yeah, give like me we a good we film. We want to see character related arguments, not fucking they showed how the one percent live it's like it's, it's uh. very small it's a very small good thing i guess if you're i guess this film is so bad you have to like grasp so hard to the smallest things that are you can interpret as good like why wouldn't he want to talk well he's going to talk about the characters i assume he's just getting out the small things maybe that's that's what we're doing right now um as as for force for skype chat uh i don't necessarily have a huge issue with it but like, nah, it's, nah. you know, like it's 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 mostly fine. It's just like it's obviously an excuse to get them to speak to each other, the protagonist and antagonist. Um, it's just that uh, obviously, apparently, it takes an incredibly powerful force to be able to do it. And Snoke was obviously given that intro, which is why we kind of again wanted his history. So that slots in nice and easy instead of just being like, oh, he was super powerful, more powerful than Palpatine. Also, he's dead by, and it's like, oh, okay. That was interesting. Extensions of what we've seen before. And speaking of the Force, no other movie explains it as well as Luke does here. Oh. Um. <laughs> um. I, 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 I was just, Yoda and Empire has, has the definitive explanation of the Force. I'm, I've been silent because it's like, my brain. 
<laughs> it's like I, I don't know how anyone on earth can be as dumb as Patrick Willems. I don't think that there's I mean Well this is Patrick. <laughs> I can't even to quote an email Jonah Hill once wrote describing a jump street men in black crossover. To quote it's the clean intellectual to... maestro Jonah Hill. <laughs> to quote Jonah Hill, yeah that this took a turn. Like We're... all right. Rad and powerful. I wanna bring up something that doesn't get talked was... I missed that. Yeah. Ro roll that back. I missed that. Clean and rad. Oh wait. An email Jonah Hill once wrote describing a Jump Street Men in Black crossover. It's clean and rad and powerful. I want to bring up something. Clean, really? rad, and powerful. Like my fursona. Gonna gonna require some qualification there, Mister Mister Patrice, because I I don't really follow. Something that doesn't get talked about enough. Star Wars has always been weird. Remember the cantina scene? Who the hell said Star Wars wasn't weird? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Is that is it is like, is that like the last Jedi doesn't make any sense, and then he responds, "Star Wars has always been weird." It's like that's it, not that's not what it's we're, not, an that's not the argument, <laughs> not an argument, not the argument. Remember Figrin, Dan, and the modal nodes. Remember how there's a fucking devil in there just chilling at the bar? And don't, why don't swear it, to your parents? Yeah. Yeah. That's not our argument. <laughs> also, <laughs> dude, I just realized like Yoda shouldn't be casting lightning. That's ridiculous. Then he goes, "There was a fucking devil in the cantina." <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's. Yeah, I mean, like. Yeah. That's not our argument, though. Just. <laughs> A one-eyed tentacle creature in the trash compactor. What, what does that have to do with anything? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, and? Since the very beginning, Star Wars has been full of weird- do you, think he, do you think he said that as if people have forgotten? He's like, do you guys remember the episode 4 one? You know the old one? Not, not many people have seen it. It's the it, one with the like tentacle one. It's like he expects us to either be like, oh yeah, The Last Jedi doesn't suck because of that. Or he expects us to say, oh yeah. Star Wars sucks because there was a devil for a second and a half. It's like, it's like you're furious at the film, and then he takes you to watch episode four, you see the scene with the tentacle, and then you go, Oh, the last Jedi was actually very good. Right. Like, <laughs> I completely did, forgot about the tentacle. Ever made, has anyone ever made the argument that the last Jedi is bad because it's got weird shit in it? <laughs> yeah, this is the thing, I don't understand where he's coming from with this one. Weird shit, and the last Jedi lives up to that legacy. Okay. The giant no, alien doesn't. cow thing that Luke made. Oh, 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 God. <laughs> okay, okay. To be fair, to be fair, there was one person who did say that the last Jedi was bad because there's some weird shit. Oh, it was well. Jared. <laughs> Jared. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, uh, you don't want to be. Bit of an exception. You do not want to be caught <laughs> arguing for the the milk monster. That's not a great position to have. But go for I, it, Patrick. This is just go the absolute it. worst screen to pause on. Go, I... go for it. And the last cut I lives up to that legacy. The giant alien cow thing that Luke milks is one of my favorite additions to this. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why am I even surprised? I'm not even surprised by that. It's one of his favorite Stop, stop, Time out, time out. It's one of his favorite additions. Um, I, I really want to hear him quantify oh my God. why this is his favorite edition. <laughs> why is that? Explain. This is real. Patrick, explain. I mean, come on, you, you, you got the porgs, you got the the precious crystal fox boys, you got you got those little horse llama things. I mean, you got so much to pick from, and it's the the titty elephant thing. <laughs> titty <Why>? elephant. <laughs> he, he's, uh, Jesus, he's he's got to be trolling. <laughs> no, wait a minute, serious. Patrick. No. <sighs> this okay. is Patrick. All right, Patrick. Let's. We'll take you seriously. <gasps> Weird shit. And the last <laughs> Jedi lives up to that legacy. Yes. The giant alien cow thing that Luke milks is one of my favorite additions <laughs> to this whole series. And if you don't like the whole series, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I thought he. 
Man, I, I, I was gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, at least it's just this movie. At least it's just the last Jedi. Jesus Christ. How did you get this one to be your favorite? In oh. in all of Star Wars as a saga, the alien elephant titties are the favorite. Wow, that's just that that can't you can't. Okay, go on. It it, it it has to be a punchline of a joke. Like he can't seriously freaking say this. Elks is one of my favorite additions to this whole series. And if you don't like it, no offense, <laughs> but you have boring taste, and I don't want to be friends. <laughs> Serious, Patrick. You can't. This is insane. Look, you know, it's one thing to say, like, oh, anyone who likes The Last Jedi needs to be, like, killed or, or is stupid. It's like, obviously, that's hyperbolic. He's actually arguing that if you don't like the alien elephant boobs, then you you have bad taste. Or boring taste, sorry. Like, oh. I don't know, man. I, I think I'd rather be boring than, like, whatever that thing is. Jesus. I'm... Uh, he didn't even try. He was just did, like, nah, you suck. Did, did your parents block your access of Pornhub so you have only this movie to vent? Like, fuck. Oh, God. Amazing. He's just gonna skip the argument and just go straight to, look, if you don't get it, you're boring. <laughs> it's like, okay. Boring taste, and I don't want to be friends with you. I don't want to be friends with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, he's getting, okay, he's getting let's, super. Let's, 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 but also, we've got the fish nuns and a hellmouth. The fish nuns and the hellmouth. What? <laughs> I, I, I missed that. I missed okay. that. I'm sorry. Okay, you know, I, I genuinely thought like, okay, maybe we're laughing too early. Maybe he's gonna be like, you see, this is what these these haters would say. But no, he's just going with it. He's serious, dude. He just said the fish nuns and the hellmouth as like defenses for the last Jedi. <laughs> Like it, no offense, but you have boring taste, and I don't want to be friends with you. <laughs> you don't also, want to be we got the fish nuns and a hellmouth where the movie goes all David Lynch and those crazy things hanging out on Canto Bite. Nobody, nobody fucking complimenting that in Canto Bite. It was bizarre. It was like, why is why is there an opera singing <sighs> chunky alien thing? Do you remember the one that was putting coins in BB-8? It was like super CGI. And everyone, everyone just watching the film was just like. Oof, this is... Oh, uh, you mean like the oof. little gremlin-looking thing? Which was actually voiced by Mark Hamill, as far as I know, which is the nice nice fact about it. But yeah, most, and I'm saying this, obviously not everyone, but most people were citing the prequels when they came to this scene. They were like, this is very prequel-ish. And it was probably because of how much CGI was in it. Even though the prequels aren't I mean, all CGI, I'm just saying. Maybe you need to lay off that soy tea, buddy. Hey man, it's giving him great taste that I am jealous of. Good, don't you want to live in a world where you could enjoy all of these horrible things? <laughs> <sighs> well, we've got the fish nuns and a hellmouth where the movie goes all fish David nuns. Lynch and those crazy things hanging out on Canto Bite. Oh yeah, Canto Bite. You know, that section of the movie that people hate where they say nothing happens and it should just be don't, entirely no, cut out of the movie. Don't, 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 no. No, it, no. You defend Cantabite. So I swear, I might actually lose my mind. This is interesting, right? So when when H Bomber guy defended Dark Souls Two, a lot of people noted that he chose some really bad arguments instead of the actual strengths of the film. It would be like saying, uh, game. S s s well, game, sorry, yeah. So c cereal is great mm. because it can power your car. It can act as a shield from the sun if you pour it on yourself. You're like, what do you No, That's not why cereal's good. It's like, why, why, why are you making these arguments? <laughs> so if, if you're going to defend The Last Jedi, there are several things that I personally would pick strategically. Uh, uh, Canto Bite and Alien Booby Monster, not high on the list. In fact, I would yes. argue they're pretty much on the bottom so what are you doing, Patrick? What are you doing? Like, Man, people this... called me the contrarian, but Jesus. I, yeah, let's, at least he's. I Come think he's on, arguing for this not, one. Go, at least. Go, go, not even go on, Patrick. The last Jedi, like, um, like Cannabite. Like even that yeah. guy who was like shit talking rags, and he was like, "My uncles told me." Like no one cares what your uncle said. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it, like even that guy was like, can "Yeah, Cannabite sucks." It's like. Oh, even that idiot! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> this is the thing, loads of people concede. It's like, yeah, Canto Bite was shit. Okay, fine, fine. We're moving on, we're gonna talk about the better stuff. It's, it's like, shit. okay. I, I cannot, it's if shit. he, I, I just hope he does 
I mean, <laughs> we're about to find out, Wolf. Are you excited? Let, let him go on. Let him go on. Let him go on. Nothing happens. It should just be entirely cut out of the movie. I could spend several minutes here talking about how oh, it's important that we see the oppressed people in the galaxy and the hope that the resistance symbol inspires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hope. The oh. hope that they inspire when they've been in power for the past 30 years, if you pay attention to the actual film. As if. <laughs> As if the institution of the Republic did anything for these people except actually encourage the activity. The idea that the Resistance were the ones that were going to save them when they didn't do shit for the past three decades. Watch the film and you'll actually understand why it doesn't matter. We actually, we could believe that the First Order might be the ones that save these people. We don't actually know if Canto Bite are subservient to the First Order. We actually get told they sell to both the bad guys and the good guys. Did anyone watch this film? when they decided to defend it. Like, this is what I get about the, the references. I'm like, you're inventing the film. This is not what happened. You're insane. Rant over. <laughs> just <get rid. laughs> it's, it just annoys me. Oh, somebody, it's somebody, what somebody sent the fan art of Terry Crews' Siri. <laughs> of course. Oh, is that wait, on Twitter, I'm really? guessing. Yeah. Where'd they yes, do it? yes. Check our Twitter. Let's <sighs> see it. I could spend several reasons saying why it's, you know, a thing, but then, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. I'm just going to talk weird. about other things. <laughs> they, they you know, every that. single time he says something stupid, just show Terry Crews' Siri. <laughs> that's, that's, wait, that's our counter argument, yeah. Uh, but you gotta... Oh, wait. No, wait. That's not it. Can you retweet it? I really want to see it, but it's not showing up in my All right, I'll retweet it. Someone sent me a picture of South Park. <laughs> when you watch the milking scene in Star Wars The Last Jedi and they just photoshopped uh, Patrick Willem's face <laughs> onto, onto uh, Luke is it or uh, I, can't, I haven't watched South Park in years the guy with the mustache you know where he was jacking off near his computer and it's just everywhere oh Randy yeah <laughs> I already retweeted it if you want to see it uh, well, I usually don't go on Twitter <laughs> until the end of the streams because I try and take all the notifications at once then. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I, I would retweet it, but I'm banned from Twitter for this week, so. Oh, oh yeah, I don't know if you, you want to mention that to these the, the people in the stream while you can. Oh, yeah, so um, basically, I said some jokes on Twitter that were very obviously jokes, and I said a word that people didn't like, which wasn't even bad, it was retard. And <laughs> it's bad to them, dude. <laughs> well, uh, people it, people wanted to see the series. Well, okay. well, anyway, you know, oh, it's shit. just because of that, I, I can no longer use Twitter for a week because Twitter banned me. Yeah, Jeez. Wolf is so off you're, you're Twitter for the week. Without a, a week without memes. <clears throat> Sorry. He's not ignoring you guys. He's been banned. Actually, you still get PMs, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I can still DM people, but it's like, well, who am I going to do? Mm. Who am I gonna DM? Everyone I talk to, I talk to on Discord. <laughs> All right, then let's let's continue. In the galaxy and the hope that the Resistance symbol inspires. I could talk about how the failures. Can you imagine how much you would hate the Resistance? You'd be like, you guys have let us suffer for decades under your rule. We thought things would change when you took down the Empire, but you did nothing. I want to see yeah, that oh. movie. Let's see that movie. <laughs> By the way, seven minutes in, and I cannot believe I say this, but Jared's review of the last two <laughs> makes more sense, <laughs> including the, uh, the the detail that Ray killed Han. You know, put that in there; it still makes more sense. <laughs> Symbol inspires. I could talk about how the failures here caused by Poe and Finn are essential teaching moments in both. It didn't know. It was the robot. The robot caught BB-8 in the box. It wasn't their <laughs> fault. <clears throat> go, go on. Go on. This is what I mean, though. He revises the scenes to match a narrative, and it's really annoying. Symbol inspires. I could talk about how the failures here caused by Poe and Finn are essential teaching moments in both of their arcs, but what I really want to mention are three very important things. Okay. Number one, a drunk goblin puts coins in BB-8, and that rules. Do we? Should we comment I, on I'm that? I'm done. I'm done. Should I'm we done. even comment on that? <laughs> <I'm done>. Like. <laughs> It's almost as strong as his elephant booby argument, I'd say. But sure, let's see yeah. the next one. I'm starting to think this might actually be a troll video. Like, there is a good chance. Yes, cause... it is a troll video. It because... is a troll video. Because he's not... Yeah. Really... I mean, I, I just... If this is not a troll video, this is insane. 
I can't believe he would make these arguments. Like, even the worst Last Jedi defenders have made better arguments. Even the guy that well, we debated the first time, the first guy we ever debated Muller. Maybe. He had better arguments. He did, yeah. Maybe, and again, maybe, only, only suggesting, maybe Patrick realized that there was quite a bit of, <sighs> let's say, controversy in covering Star Wars. And so he was like, I'll make this video. <sighs> And you know it'll be the end of like he's already made two, so he's like let's just throw a third one on, and I'll actually deliberately give it you know weak arguments so it'll get covered more, and generate you know like that that could be a motivation for it because if we go further and we still like the arguments get even worse, like I'm starting to wonder if he actually is just trying to fuck with us. Yeah, go on. Because I have seen Number when he posted two, this on, on Twitter, uh, he, when he posted this on Twitter, a lot of people mm. were celebrating how well argued it was. Like people who were on the side of the Last Jedi is no, great. No, it's not. So that's that's, no, that's the thing. I don't know if this is parody, but there's a lot of evidence stacking up against it at this point. Number one, a drunk goblin puts coins in BB-8, and that rules. Number two, it is now canon that Maz Kanata has had sex with Justin Thoreau. Number three, watching what? rich people get their shit destroyed is one of the purest pleasures in all of cinema, and if you can't appreciate that, I feel sorry for you. Ooh. What? So let's, let's listen to that again, and let's not say anything over it, because that's, that's a very interesting okay, okay. statement. Uh, okay, Goblin okay. puts coins in BB-8, and that rules. Number two, it is now canon that Maz Kanata has had sex with Justin Thoreau. Number three, watching rich people get their shit destroyed is one of the purest pleasures in all of cinema, and if you can't appreciate uh, I that, see. I feel sorry for you. So to clarify, if you don't gain pleasure from watching rich people have their things destroyed, he feels sorry for you. He's a... Can we just skip to the end of the video just to see if he's like, uh, oh, this was all a joke? Because if it if that's the case, not really much point responding to the rest. Because like of that's a bit like, yeah. whoa, dude. Like if if you if you want people to take this seriously, it's like, ooh, that's a bit. Ooh. No, I'm just no, gonna the thing look is, it up the, right now. The, the thing is, even if it's a joke, even if he said that it's a joke, there are so many people that take it seriously. I, oh, of course. Like I don't. I still legit. don't think this is a joke. I think this is. It's not too far away from his plot holes video in terms of argumentation. He's really bad at it. Yeah. yeah. But you know. Well, oh, he yeah. sponsors Skillshare at the end too. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but let's get serious here. For a long time now, oh, I had a beef okay, with the original Okay, trilogy. okay, it was a joke. So okay, all of it was okay. a joke, and now we're serious, okay? Let's, let's, let's okay, 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 go on, Get go serious on. here. For a long time now, I've had a beef with the original trilogy. See, Return of the Jedi reveals uh -huh. that Luke and Leia are twins, which makes Leia Darth Vader's daughter, and yet, she seems to have zero connection to the Force, and she gets zero closure with her father. Uh, wait, you are fine with Rey having massive amounts of power... Uh, without any kind of source, but you're not okay with Leia lacking a lot of power despite having a fair source. Seems kind of inconsistent to me. I'm confused by why he would spend so much time just saying a whole bunch of like the insane shit. The reason why it then, doesn't like, bother. Okay, let's get serious. The reason why it doesn't bother me, Wolf, and, and and several others about Leia is because she hasn't been trained. She hasn't unlocked the potential, if you will, like Luke does in his trilogy. Like Luke was just like Leia. So is Rey. <laughs> well, this is the thing. We are annoyed at Rey because she has unlocked a massive amount of power. And we're like, how did you do that? No training, no one telling you anything, no one exploring anything with it. And it's like, okay. But with Leia, we're like, oh, Leia could be trained. Leia could be explained to you how it all works. She could have her moment on Dagobah. So. It's interesting to yeah. me because it's like that's our issue, and he's looking at it in the reverse way. He's like, "Yeah, Ray is great. That's fine. That makes sense." But Leia, where's her moment with the Force? It's like, well, why would she have a moment with the Force? She hasn't had ever had it. Uh, and besides, she does have like a little little inklings. She she contacts Luke through the Force, um, in Empire, and uh, you get it in the Last Jedi. Not really. She's in a coma. She felt Han die through the. This things. I I'm curious if he's going to add to this because this is him being serious now. If you remember, she seems to have zero connection to the Force, and she gets zero closure with her father. Yoda says there is another, but then she doesn't get to do anything. Because he was referring to Star Killer. <laughs> <laughs> God, don't you understand not, the law?
Anyway, this is a long way of saying that the much maligned scene where Leia uses the Force to pull herself back into the ship thrilled me, because in one what? moment it told us that she did not spend the last 30 years trapped in Ember. Of fucking course she can use the Force. She's a goddamn- It's not- that's not the problem. It's okay that she can use the Force. It goes a bit further when she's doing something that not even Yoda should be able to do. You know, it just occurred to me that he might have thrown in that- it that segment where he just said a bunch of insane shit just for us. I mean, I don't know why you would put that at the beginning. It's, well, I guess to try and get us off the video, maybe? No, to get us to get us laugh. I mean, I, I appreciate it if he literally did it just to get us to laugh, because I mean... I mean, if that's the case, it's like, okay, you filled the void that Jared left. Yes. <laughs> Thank you? Um, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, this is. This is like I've a, not actually heard this argument before, by the way. That people are annoyed that Leia didn't do enough with the Force and the OT, and that she didn't have closure with her father. She, you know, like those those are things that really weren't developed, so they didn't have payoffs. Like, like you, you know, there's a story to be had there, I suppose. But um, strange, because that's just not the focus at all, and it doesn't really have any. She's got her own shit going on, like is what I would say. But then also <sighs> to add to the whole like. That's what makes that scene so good, is that we see her using the Force. It's like, we could have had any other way of doing that. We, did, we, did, we didn't need Mary Poppins. That was not the requirement. <laughs> and, oh, there's debates constantly about whether or not she should have survived it. It's just like, can we just drop it? Of course she shouldn't have survived it. Skywalker. Which leads me to another thing I love about this movie. It directly addresses something Skywalker, that I thought about. doesn't mean that she can't she doesn't need training because both Anakin and Luke did. <laughs> That's the thing that, that people yeah. tend to really look past like Anakin the prodigy the one with the most midichlorians he still needed training for what like two decades and that's a lot of training by the way it's a lot and he was still training under the Emperor we could assume so yeah Leia should just be that powerful this is the problem this is the exact problem with Rey and you know it's even worse with Rey because she has no relation because at least if she was a Skywalker we could be like okay I guess she somehow managed to tap into Luke's power without training. The, you know, that would still be kind of an issue, but not even that. She's a goddamn Skywalker. Which leads me to another thing I love about this movie. It directly addressed something that I've thought about for years. That maybe the Jedi kind of suck. What? Uh, like maybe their elitist monk-like rules where they bury all their emotions aren't especially Is he pretending helpful? like this is something wait, wait, new? Wait. Yeah, that, I think we all were on board. Hasn't that been explored in the prequels? I thought that was the point of the prequels, that the Jedi were uh, were bloated and uh, yeah. they had rules that like, we didn't really appreciate. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. Yeah, like, that's kind Come of a, part, that's a big George part of the Lucas trilogy. George Lucas did this, like, 12 years ago. And, you know, the, the, this is a complicated subject, but it's like, yeah, the prequels are the story of how the Jedi essentially, through through their own, you could, you could argue, like, like, uh... Sort of, sort of apathy, like they're so comfortable in their position that the, the you know, there's a snake in the rose right in, in, in front of them. But, uh, let's just see where he's going with this, I suppose? What? Like maybe their elitist monk like rules where they bury all their emotions aren't especially healthy. And it Who the fuck said they were, that, were, that was healthy? Like, no, yeah, I don't think anybody I interpreted it as healthy. It has been explored in many, many Star Wars stories. Not just the prequels, but the expanded universe as well. Quotes are exploring it. Uh, do you think, it, as, as, under the impression, like, do you think Luke was emotionless in the OT? He would go directly <laughs> against all the teachings of the Jedi in terms of maintaining no emotional attachments. Kind of. I, I don't mean, even watch the prequels. Like, yeah, this is strange that he's using the prequels to defend the Last Jedi as well. It's those strict rules that led Anakin Skywalker to freaking out and murdering a bunch of kids and becoming Darth Vader. Freaking out is one way to put it. That's, yeah, if, let's just, let, we'll leave that one go, I suppose, because yeah, yeah. he's pretty yeah, much yeah. on our team for the how it's, like, ridiculous, but And sure. now we know that Luke tried to start a new Jedi Order, and then pretty much the same thing happened all over again. So when Luke said... Well, Not really. I, I, don't, I don't think no. Obi-Wan's tried to kill Anakin's sleep. Um, yeah, it's a little bit different, because, you know, you've got an actual Sith Lord who's orchestrated the destruction of the entire Senate he is, is, <laughs> and then you've got Luke, for some reason, tried to murder his, his, his sister and best friend's son in his sleep, and then he decided in turn, do you remember how that goes? He wakes up, 
He then locks swords with Luke and pulls the roof down on him. Luke gets knocked out. Kylo then kills every student other than the Knights of Ren and then leaves with them and Luke wakes up to the aftermath. How insane is that? That Kylo was asleep. He woke up to this guy trying to kill him who's supposed to be his teacher and then decides, I'm going to kill everyone here. And not <laughs> Luke, by the way. He, yeah. he just forgets <laughs> about Luke. It's like, I, it doesn't make any sense at all. But it's so quick like, that people don't get was, to think about was it. Was he just viciously bullied at the <laughs> Jedi Academy? I mean, they were all just yeah. making fun of him because he's so crap compared to Han Solo, who's like <laughs> epic as shit. They're like, oh my god, like why are you such a dweeb? And he's like, shut up. I'll kill all why of you. Are you as good look why are you as good looking as your dad? <laughs> your your dad killed a Death Star. What have you done? It's like, mm, I'll make a new Death Star. It'll be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, the explosion will be bigger. Because you just have, like, Snoke just walks in between the time that Luke's under the rubble and gets out of it, and he's like, you should kill all of them. But he's like, yeah, sure. I don't, I don't even know who you are, but you're just, it seems about right. But yeah, say, it's the same exact story as the prequels, really. Says the Jedi don't work and should just stop before they ruin things some more. I'm yeah, way, way to generalize it. Luke says that uh, the Jedi gave rise to Palpatine, and they were the ones that trained Vader, which is the kind of shit that really bugged me in the film, because I was like, yeah, just ignore the parts where the Jedi were the ones that stopped him. You know, you are that guy. You were the Jedi that brought <sighs> peace back, but let's ignore that part. Let's ignore the fact that all the Jedi were betrayed and backstabbed across the prequels. You know, this, when they tried to prevent the rise of the Sith. Let's ignore that too. Let's just say so that the Jedi they, caused it. Someone said that Kylo Ren is a school shooter. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's the it's exact same storyline. Like People have actually compared him to that. Like they, yeah. they've oh, said that, he's... So basically it's like, oh, so Kylo Ren killed all the people because they didn't have lightsaber control. Oh, got it. <laughs> Some of got you guys it. are all right. Don't come into the Jedi Temple tomorrow. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> he knew that Luke was going to try and kill him that night. Sitting there in the theater applauding and shouting, yes, thank you. But wait, let's slow down a little bit because that's not exactly what's happening here. Despite what Luke says at the beginning, the movie doesn't actually think the Jedi should end. After all, at the end, after Luke has learned and grown, he straight up says, I will not be the last Jedi. That doesn't mean that he supports the idea that the Jedi should continue. He just points out the fact that he's not the last one. But it's mm -hmm. besides the fact that, yeah, the, the, the idea that the Jedi had, had broken is terrible from Luke's perspective. And it doesn't even make sense. Like one of my issues with Luke's character in, in the film. The movie doesn't want the Jedi to end, it wants them to evolve. This whole movie is about moving on from the past. I like The Force Awakens and I think it does a great job introducing interesting new characters, but the movie is obsessed with the past. It brings back the original status quo and the original conflict and it's structured around- Well no, Force Awakens kind of did that, but The Last Jedi have obliterated them again, quote unquote. You know, they've destroyed their entire army of Star Destroyers and ripped the the um what was it called the supremacy in half so like we don't even know if that's actually going to have an effect on the first order i guess we'll find out in the next episode if that actually matters or if they just have another fleet of star destroyers because duh. but um yeah i would i would blame the force awakens for re resetting the uh the status quo more so than the last jedi the last jedi did new things guys we can appreciate that story beats we've seen before and full of images we've seen before but the last jedi moves forward I'm oh, not... maybe he was saying that uh, that is the case. It... Is he saying that The Last Jedi is progressive? Well, <laughs> he's saying it moves yeah, forward. Yeah. And, he, maybe, and he, did, uh... he did mention that they did stick it to the 1%. Don't forget that. I'm going to spend 10 minutes explaining how immaculately crafted the character arcs are because that's all covered in a great video on the channel just right. Yeah. So I'll call it in the background that's not realistic. Uh... Oh no! I was gonna say, Wolf, how are you not reacting? Let's just no. let's just hear that again. Let's hear that again. I'm not going to spend ten minutes explaining how immaculately crafted the character arcs are because that's all covered in a great video on the channel just right that you should go watch. So to clarify for you, Patrick, since you are completely unaware, uh, one of Just Right's points were about Poe and how he refuses to learn and how uh, Holdo keeping the information from him was due to the fact that she couldn't trust him. Uh, we had a debate with him and uh, I got, uh, we, we, we got him to the point of being silent when we actually explained how it doesn't make any sense at all for her to hold that information. So maybe that video isn't as well crafted as most would think. You know what, we should cover that at some point because we never actually did. We covered his... Um, 
his video explaining reader response theory, but we never actually did that one. We could uh, we could put that on the list. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> but I thought you did cover this one though. No, no, I, I've writing. seen it, but I've never watched it on like a stream or anything. Um, but yeah, it's it, it, the 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 true reasoning behind this, by the way, is that they promote each other's videos. I don't think they actually give a shit, really. It's more about you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Because if you remember, Just Right promoted his video on um, uh, uh, plot holes. What are you doing, Wolf? <laughs> well, this is interesting. Oh, that's what you're trying to get. Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe, like... I mean, you you, pro you just you could leave it. It's okay. I think most people in this <laughs> stream have probably seen that anyway. If you haven't, look for the Just Right mm. debate on on Dishonored Wolf's channel. But um, yeah, the the uh, the biggest thing with with Just Right was that he told us was that he kind of regrets making his Hobbit series because um, he didn't want to take anyone's enjoyment of the films out of them. Which uh, is kind of a sad sort of regression of his channel, being that he wanted to celebrate good writing, criticize bad writing. Now he only wants to celebrate good writing and proper bad writing, even if it's bad. Like it's it, it doesn't really care as long as it made pe people feel stuff. So um, it, it is interesting that this has come full circle now because he was promoting Patrick and now Patrick's promoting him. I guess that's just a. A back and forth. They're, Why not? They're friends, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I'm not they saying they probably I... talk to each other. Patrick won't, though. They... I'll give just right this. At least he had the balls to come on and talk to us. Patrick has outright <laughs> admitted on his Twitter account that he will not talk to people that he doesn't have respect for. Yeah, and then or it's developed else. into like people he agrees with, basically. And that's he the thing. He literally just outright admitted that he lives in an echo chamber. And, he, and that's I mean, the thing, there are some people, say... some people like, like, are okay with that. They'll be like, yeah, that's defendable, that's fine. It's just like, well, it's not going to give you a very broad view of media, ever. He did say that if you didn't like the titty monster scene, uh, <laughs> he's not his friend. <laughs> You're not his friend. <laughs> we can't uh... be friends anymore. Yeah, you still invited Patrick to come and watch bad video essays with us on this, on this, on this channel. We'll, we'll do it with you, it'll be fun. He won't do it. <laughs> but the movie beautifully weaves together arcs for Ray, Finn, Poe, Luke, and Kylo Ren, in which they all- I'm sorry, what the hell was Kylo's arc? I'm a good guy, no, I'm a bad guy. I'm a good guy, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> like, interesting. He's just, he does no idea. Nobody has any idea what Kylo's doing. Kylo certainly doesn't. Yeah. It's embarrassing. because you know, taking off his shirt. A lot of people yeah. cite the fact that if he had actually, like, left the First Order, or- you know, done his own thing, become a lone wolf. He'd be like, "Oh, that could be interesting. I wonder where he's gonna." It's like, no, he just literally, as soon as Ray leaves, is the de facto empire again, and just starts assaulting Hoth because why not? <laughs> I swore rain. I love it. It's like the, as if the fucking how many movies can even have extremely detailed and meaningful uh, th five different arcs in two hours? Like, it's it's you'd have to be pretty fucking impressive to be able to nail that. And it's like, it's not. That's not what happens in this film. It's just confusion. The Lord of the Ring. Is that in one film, would you say? Or would you say across the three? Well, I count the three as one film anyway. Oh, well, yeah. In that case, it, it extended. That does have quite a few hours on The Last Jedi. <laughs> Infinity War? Uh, you got Iron Man, I would say, is, is, is definitely a strong one. Uh, people would, mm -hmm. like, who, el who else would you say? Like, Thanos would be two. Um, mm -hmm. because a lot of characters are there, right? And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, because I don't think you can have like you know, it's like give everyone an arc, uh, give all forty characters an arc, and be like, no, please. <laughs> um, but what I'm trying to argue is it's very fucking difficult to have five meaningful character arcs in one movie. You can do it. It's just that do you really think the Last Jedi was one of the films that did that? No. Oh, oh, I got one. The Gray. There's six meaningful character arcs. Oh, there you go. Oh. Um. Okay. Like I said, video coming soon, everyone. There you go, and he'll prove. Just gotta it. throw my plug in it, there. Is is your video gonna be? If you guys don't like the grape, you have bad taste, and I don't want to be friends with you. Well, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Learn from failure and move on from the past. Finally, all tying together right at the moment when Haldo tears a star destroyer. <laughs> Haldo. <laughs> Haldo. Admiral Haldo. <laughs> Oh. In recent cinema, and if you're too hung up on the made-up science in this fictional- Oh shit, wait, did I skip over something there? 
<sighs> to learn from failure and move on from the past, finally all tying together right at the moment when Haldo tears a Star Destroyer in half in one of the straight up coolest moments in recent cinema. And if you're too hung up on the made up science in this fictional world of space wizards to enjoy that, then I weep for you. Because I weep for you. Oh, Sorry it ruins the stakes you. of all of the past space in battles. Sorry though. Did, did you guys remember being like on the edge of your seat when they're trying to survive the onslaught of the Death Star in Episode Six while they try and get rid of the shield generator? And you're like, "Come on, do it!" Uh, and then it was on the edge of my seat when um when they started like pulling away from the Death Star when they realized the shield wasn't down, and then they came face to face with the fleet behind them. Yeah. And then the Death Star starts shooting up all their sh uh, ships, and it could do it in like only a minute instead of an hour. It's literally so, like one of the moments of just like jesus christ the good guys are about to be obliterated like because they've just been trapped and the death star's active and then the shield goes down and then the music rises that they all fucking go inside the death star and it's epic as shit and it's just like when you watch that back now you'll be like why isn't the x-wing just fucking why is this hyperdrive why isn't the millennium falcon just hyperdrive yeah why aren't they yeah, yeah that's like one of my one of the biggest questions that i have like is hyper hyperspace hyperdrive like uh <laughs> suicide bombing a thing apparently <laughs> thing? well see some people are like you needed you needed a massive ship and it's like well the radis had the radis uh, has similar it's the biggest of the capital ships i believe in history of the star wars episodes but they still had those capital ships in episode six so, someone in the chat i'm sorry it just made me laugh really hard Someone said, how does his mother not beat him? <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> I forgot that they're even in this video. Like, what was the point of them? I guess they're just a gag. That's probably it. But, uh, yeah. Um, that's, that's it. He's saying, like, oh, I feel sorry for you if you can't, you know, get over the science part of it. And I'd be like, normally it would be fine if this was the only movie in the fucking series. But unfortunately, it ruins the stakes in the old one if I take this one seriously, which you can fucking guarantee it's, I won't it's be. It's the logic. It's the consistency between the films that we have issues with. Not necessarily the science of it. Yeah, it's not. I can I can believe it that you can hyperspace into something and it destroys it. It's just the the other episodes are relying on the idea that that's not a thing. So, yes, you've ruined that. <laughs> it's like, uh, who am I going to believe? The the well, it's not even the six. You can count Force Awakens and Rogue One and Solo in the collection of films that did not fuck that up. All those films, all the Last Jedi. Whose continuity are you going to follow? It's like, I'm going to go ahead and follow the uh, the good ones if you don't mind. One more time, this is a movie about space wizards intended for children. But the point- And that's why you've spent so long explaining why you adore this film and it's got some of the best cinematic experiences in recent memory. It does kind of imply that he's a child, so... Well, it, I was gonna say that, I don't know if that's a low blow or not. Is that, is he that, is that what he's trying to say? Is, is he like, I love this and I think it is for children, therefore I'm kinda like a kid? Like, I don't know. He did kind of say that. And the Space Wizards argument, as, as so many people are getting frustrated at it, it's just like, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't fucking mean anything. Drop it. <laughs> I don't know why you think it helps you. The point I'm making is that this is a movie about <coughs> moving forward. It is not, as some people believe, about burning the past or killing the past. Or... <laughs> I don't think you're gonna uh, have... Uh, good luck arguing that one. Is, isn't that the definition of, like, moving forward, like... I mean, you could past. argue that, yeah. Uh, get rid of the past to move forward. But, you know, this film yeah. shits on the OT more so than any other Star Wars film ever did. That's why it's like, wow, they really hated the past, didn't they? Yeah. Because a lot of people cited they, the prequels. They literally said, you know, make the past die, kill it if you have to. Yeah, and, and as I said, there are, there are YouTubers who promoted that. They were like, that's an interesting philosophy, that if you want to move forward in life, you do actually sort of cut the past out of your life you kill it it's like fucking hell <laughs> calm down i mean sure like, but uh, it doesn't work with star wars mm. in the past die kylo ren while probably the best new star wars character since yoda like people keep saying that uh, no. also wait why is he bringing dex to jester into this i've got i've got to see what the reasoning <laughs> is for that the past or killing the past or letting the past die Kylo Ren, while probably the best new Star Wars character since Yoda, other than Dexter Dresser, of course, is a- Okay, well, at least that, he, that like, understands- That was clearly a joke. At yeah. least he knows that Dexter- Well, no, that's not a joke, because Dexter is the best character in the Star Wars Expanded Universe. I'm just saying, oh. we need a Dexter Star Wars story. 
But oh, okay. you know, there's a lot of people. I hate everything is one of the people that says that Kylo is the best character across the saga. It blows my mind how you. Do you know how easy it would be for me and Wolf to just write a story where there's a character who just keeps doing things. They're just good and bad things, and they just keep doing things, and the audience is like, wow, I wonder what their actual motivations are, their goals are, what they what they value, and that's how you write the best character, apparently. When you have nothing to go on, when they're just insane, they just do things. People are like, oh, so interesting. And you know why? Because they're generating the character themselves. They're like, oh, they're conflicted because of this, this, and they're doing this because of this, this. It's like... We didn't even get the scene where Luke tried to kill Kylo and people were saying that Kylo was the best character in Saga from Force Awakens, which again, we've got barely anything to go on. We really have nothing to go on with Kylo. He's just crazy. He does bad and good things all the time. Yeah, he was to like, say that he's the best character on the new trilogy is not saying much. He's like a psychopath at the end of Force Awakens, like trying to destroy everything, kill everyone, despite mm. even with the wound. And then like throughout The Last Jedi, he's like, so, um... I guess I am kind of a monster, but did you know that that's because of Luke? And it's like, what the? Why are you? You were like an imperial dreadnought man, being like, I'm gonna kill everybody who opposes me. But now you're like, you know, I may be a bad guy, but Luke's not exactly a good guy. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? And then it's like, oh, he's so layered. He's so complicated. It's like, uh, sure. People fine. in the chat are pointing out he's pretty much just a really bad knockoff of Jason Solo from the books. I don't really know much about Jason Solo. But yeah, I've, I've definitely heard that before as well. It's But the, let me ask you this. Is he going to be a good guy or a bad guy in, in the ninth episode when it starts? Well, bad guy. The bad. assumption would be bad guy. But if it started with him basically being outside of the, the First Order and then he contacts Rey and says, we need to stop them. And then she's like, why should I trust you? I would just immediately be like, yeah, I guess he could do that. He just flip-flops all the time, so... Just be careful, Ray. If if you defeat the first order like, with him, like who 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 will be the villain that they will fight together if he ends up being the good guy? It'll be because you know Glorm, as I explained in my series, he's gonna be Snoke's brother. He's gonna come in and be like, "You killed my brother," and that'll be his character. <laughs> he'll be like, "I can move planets with my hand," and he'll be like, "Ooh, new force powers!" <laughs> <laughs> he just crushes it and make, fucking Infinity yeah, Gauntlets it towards Iron Man. It makes sense. Or maybe it'll Makes go sense. full Dead Space 3 and they'll have to fight an evil tentacle moon. <laughs> they have to throw it into the black hole like in Solo. <laughs> <sighs> we need more Cthulhu in Star Wars. Come on, guys. Yeah, all, that couldn't have been the end of Cthulhu. All people are going to say about... Powerful than that. All people are going to say about Kylo is that he's super conflicted and it's so interesting to watch him deal with all the conflict and you're just like... I was I was absolutely in the audience of Force Awakens that told myself when he killed Han Solo that he was definitively the bad guy. You know, I was like, oh, he's just he's decided. And then in this film, it was like, no, he hasn't. He's still a good guy. And you're like, oh. And then the end of this film, it's like, no, he's the bad guy. He's de he's decided. And you're like, ah, wonder if they're gonna do that in Episode Nine to make him sympathetic? Because this is the thing they keep running out of times to make the audience go. Oh, I guess he is a good guy. Do you remember how Vader was basically just strict evil right up until? you know Luke just kept fucking pushing and he was like finally did a good deed it's like Kylo mm -hmm. I don't even know what, what, they, what they're going for I swear to god if they redeem him at the end of episode 9 that they're like he's actually the good guy and like Rey dies to save him or something I'm gonna be like oh god <laughs> <laughs> well at least we got rid of the Mary Sue Dude, Maz Kanat is gonna die for him we'll be like oh my god Maz I Oh no. How did you get here? <laughs> Who are you? I forgot. Which one are you? <laughs> a selfish, entitled piece of shit. And while the. Wait, what? Was wait, that a... wait, what? I'm assuming that was about Kylo. Other than Dexter Jester, of course, is a selfish, entitled piece of shit. Okay, and while the Kylo. movie presents his point of view, it does not endorse it. One of the weirder aspects of the backlash to The Last Jedi has been how many people take Kylo Ren's side claiming the movie really does want to kill the past, and in the conflicting stories about that night in the Jedi training camp, they believe him, not Luke. The movie is not saying- Well, no, they give us an answer at the end. They, they, you know, it's it's Luke's side of the story, then Kylo's, and then we get the truth, you know, where it's it's like Wait, a 50-50 thing. He, he's like saying that, um, you know, Kylo Ren's the most interesting, and then he's like, well, I don't get why people are taking his side. It's like, um... I, gee, I don't know. Like, Maybe guess... because Luke decided to destroy everything that was built up for him, and then he decided to become a psychopathic murderer, and then 
Kylo Ren was given like some sort it's, of reason to be evil. It's such you know? a mess, dude. Because like you just you start at the beginning, you go innocent guy training to be Jedi, his master betrays him, and you're like, oh wow, I you know that that gets my sympathy. And then it's like, so he kills all the students. You're like, what? And then he becomes the new Vader. You're like, what? Why? And then you like, and then he decides that he might be good. And you're like, okay. But then he kills his dad. You're like, okay then. And you're like, but then he decides he might be good. And you're like, what? I'm not following. And then he decides to kill his master of the evil guys. You're like, oh, so he's a good guy. Then he decides to kill all the good guys. You're like, oh, Jesus. I... Oh. Yeah, it goes back and forth. <laughs> I Make don't understand. your mind. And yeah, it'll be interesting. That's why I want to see episode heels. nine, because we will have the answers, because it will end. <coughs> like, the story will be, well, who knows? Maybe they'll bait a, a sequel trilogy, if you know what I mean by that. Like, three movies a to be. A sequel to the sequel trilogy. Sequel, sequel trilogy. Yeah. But I, I don't get it. I just don't fucking get it. Kylo's confusing to me. I just, like, I think the biggest problem I have with him is the same as Anakin, where. The event that makes him evil does not explain the event of murdering innocent people in scores immediately. Because a lot of people cite mm -hmm. the fact that Anakin killed the Tusken Raiders kids, and like, as as that that's like a like a tell for how I, I just think there's a difference between like massacring a village full of people who are essentially like, I don't know, they capture and torture people regularly, right? Versus what look to be what like five year olds that are all hiding in a room like so you know for me it's difficult to accept that but then you've also got the kylo one where it's like yeah i don't understand and it's, it's like why are we in this position well because they gave us three flashbacks all of which were the same moment just told from slightly different um perspective <coughs> like instead of actually taking some time to sort of show the progression why did kylo turn evil and why did that matter who was he before then what did luke see it's like no nah, no nah, none of those are answered you have to think it up yourself I mean, at least fan fiction writers have lots of work to do. Yeah, they actually do research. They could be the ones that explain all of this. We should end the Jedi. It's saying we should take some of their lessons, but maybe not the dogmatic interpretation of their way of life. Oh, kind of like the OT? Kind of like how the OT was like, Luke is pretty much a Jedi, but the new Jedi? Because he clearly had emotional attachments to the point of trying to save Vader against Yoda and Obi-Wan's wishes. Kind of like how we explored this already, kind of like how the prequel showed the bad side of the dogmatic nature of the Jedi, kind of like how The Last Jedi doesn't make sense in its message anyway, but go on, I suppose. <sighs> go on. I mean, guys, Yoda shows up and straight up states the theme. The greatest teacher failure is. Which is one of my criticisms. Well, if you have a well, theme, well, don't bat it into the face of the audience. That's precisely the opposite of what you should do with a theme. Uh... Failure is the greatest teacher. Um, Ray, I don't recall Ray ever having suffered any sorts of failure. What people cite for that is usually that Ray tried to get Kylo to the light side and failed. That's her failure, uh, apparently. Again, yeah, her biggest really. flaw is being too nice. Yeah. When this scene that, came that's... up, when, when this just came up, the first thing I thought, I just thought back to that ER video on the and I genuinely expected Yoda to be like, mm, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like uh, the red light media interpretation where there's like, why is Yoda a crazy asshole in this, in this scene when he's supposed <laughs> to be all wise and shit? He's like playing the character he was when Luke first met him, where he's just like, <laughs> destroy everything, burn the temple. I just, what happened to the freaking fish nuns in the morning when they were like, this is our only job to take care of this fucking place and you burned it down, you asshole. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I didn't do it, the ghost puppet did it. <laughs> like, oh, sure. I just like that ER has pretty much replaced the bad memories of this movie with some happy ones. <laughs> But yeah, I, uh, I'm surprised as a film major studier person that he's he's blatantly okay with a theme just being told to the audience of a film. What we're supposed to do with a film or a story is delve into the subtext and use the references to infer like a message or an idea that's consistent throughout it, instead of just going the theme of this film, failure is best teacher. And you're like, oh, okay, neat. <laughs> When it comes to its main themes, this movie is not subtle, and yet a whole lot of people yeah, miss what the it's doing should because be they subtle. Yeah, the theme should be subtle. I was gonna if say, if the theme is blatant and in your face, then you did a theme wrong. He's apparently aware of this, 
and he's using it as a counterpoint. Like, people didn't catch the theme, even though it was obvious. I think they did. The problem is how badly done it is. Just because you have a theme doesn't mean it's virtuous of being a theme. Like, come on. It has to be well done. You can't just go... You know, in, in uh, we've been you through this with... can blatantly explain it. We, be, we did this with Just Right. We were like, there's a, mm. there's a theme of, you know, friendship and betrayal in the room. Like, do, does, that mean the, <laughs> the, does that mean the room is incredible now? It's like... And I think Just Right was like, well, you know, there are some people out there <laughs> who think the room... <laughs> As soon as you said that, it was like, okay. Yeah, it's done. It's over. <laughs> he wants to say that the room is a masterpiece by his subjective status, so sure, whatever. Failure is. When it comes to its main themes, this movie is not subtle. It doesn't and even sound like Yoda. A lot of people miss what it's doing because they'd rather obsess about how, I don't know, force fields work. Now, while... What? <laughs> what? What? I thought he was gonna reference the lightning from Yoda. That would make more sense. But no, he went with force fields. I can't even think of a thing. Were there force fields in the Last Jedi? I'm not sure what he's referencing. Maybe the gravity part of the bomber that they would have been. A, they're supposed to be a force field. I mean, there should have been. Does he? Uh, I bet. I just see. This is the thing. A lot of people. Go, go said they were really annoyed with my sorry, series because yeah. I didn't talk about the themes and I focused on plots and stuff. I've got like a 20 minute section on themes in the third part. Well, it's probably not that long, but like I go into how stupid it is to use themes alone as a defense for the film. And it's like, trust me, just because I hated the plot holes doesn't, doesn't mean that I ignored the themes. I saw them, they were clear as day. The bigger picture. Of course, and this is what I mean, it's like they hammered into you as part of why they're so bad. Well, Ray, Poe, Finn, and Kylo all learn from their failures and grow as people. Side note, Finn's really... arc is the best, and the moment when he wait, wrecks wait, 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 wait. Oh god, he, wait, she's wait, calm wait. down. <laughs> go back, go back, go back. Patrick, you, you can't lay Finn's that on us so quickly. <laughs> ...is not subtle, and yet a whole lot of people miss what it's doing because they'd rather obsess about how... I don't know, force fields work. Now, while Ray, Poe, Finn, and Kylo all learn from their failures and grow Insane. as people, side note, Finn's arc is the best, and the moment when he wrecks Phasma and probably declares himself to be rebel scum is my favorite moment in the movie. And it didn't make any uh... sense, because he has no reference for the rebels, only the resistance, so he should have said, I'm resistance scum or something. But even outside of that, though, his arc... Does anyone have a stab at what they thought his arc was? Because I'm still pretty he, lost like, on that he one. He doesn't even have any training to face Phasma. He became like, scum, he? I guess. So, <laughs> Which, that, that sounds kind of racist. I don't know. Can you imagine if he's like, resisted <laughs> scum? <laughs> this doesn't sound as good, does it? Um, see, so yeah, his he goes from being... I want to run away from everything to... Okay, I want to run away, but I will defend the people I love being Rey, I suppose, or care about. Then he goes to, in order to protect Rey, this time I need to leave the ship and, you know, it, it go back to being sort of cowardly and bumbling because they have a couple of bumbly jokes with him again, which I've never really gotten with Finn. I don't know why they make him bumbling all the time. It's just like, okay, cool, he's like a clown, I guess. And then he gets called a coward several times by Rose and put onto this quest to save the fleet and then convinced mm -hmm. by DJ by the realization that good guys and bad guys power the one percent that is what gives him the idea to yes i'm gonna die for the resistance the most confusing shit ever to think about yeah it's a very confused character arc if there is ever one like i said i i, I put it in my video but i just i cannot get over the fact that he has a lesson on how morality goes both ways and how there is no right guy in this in this war and then he decides there is a right guy from that it's like <laughs> That's, how did you get that? How did that happen? Not, not, <laughs> kind of missing the point there, Finn. Because yeah, because DJ would be so disappointed in him. <laughs> He'd be like, "I thought I told you, man." Jeez. But yeah, okay, fine. Anyway. He's got the best arc apparently. Okay. The best example of this is Mr. Lucas Skywalker, drinker of milk and catcher of big fish. Now, I love Luke Skywalker. I love him when he's whiny, I love him when he's heroic, and I really love him when he's conflicted. <coughs> and in the conversation around The Last Jedi, I've discovered that a lot of people have misunderstood Luke Skywalker for a really long time. Well, oh, okay. Sure. Just, oh, okay. It's the same thing Macintosh said, is that we don't get it. It's always, that's always how it works. Okay. We don't Okay, we don't go get on. It. Luke's presentation here is one of the most controversial aspects of the movie. They took our hero and made him a sad, bitter old man. And yeah, 
I get it. It's a and they didn't explain it, but yes, go on. A bit of a shock. Just look at Ray. She's shocked. She thought he was going to walk out with a laser sword and face down the whole First Order. And he has no intention of doing that. Now, I spent an unhealthy amount of time reading the comments from this movie's detractors and a ton of- I thought you didn't- Really? <laughs> I thought you, you didn't have it. Really? No, why people don't like it. Really? Oh, well, you said you didn't really? know why people didn't like it. I thought that's what he said. He's a liar. If you actually did, you would actually respond to their arguments. A lot of these things that you point out are mostly straw men. Yes. Yeah, uh... Like nobody's arguing. Nobody's arguing about the force field. It's like. Also, why are you looking at the comments for for comments on a kids movie, dude? That's just sad. It's just a kids movie. <laughs> Taking it so seriously. God, Patrick, why are you drinking coffee? as a kids drink. Wait, wait, he has milk too in the other videos. Like this is kids drinks. I'm taking it seriously as a drink. What's that little blue thing by your hand, Patrick? Yeah, it's probably a kids thing. That's why it looks like to me. It looks like the the lid of a cookie jar. Why are you eating cookies? It's kids, kids eat cookies. <sighs> of people wanted him to be off on that island, learning ancient Jedi secrets, getting more powerful, and then showing up to like. Didn't have to be that. Didn't have to be that. It could have been that he was looking for an answer on how to maybe fix something or or learn about some trick that could have helped in some way. It doesn't doesn't have to be that he becomes god or, or something it didn't he could have died in this film by failing to defeat someone in a fight like snoke for example and you still could have done it well it's by execution my friend and 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 the biggest issue by the way is like i've always said is like luke could have been the guy we saw in that film but if you don't show us how he got there which by the way would take like three films probably to do it correctly then we're just not going to believe that's luke why should we it's just a new guy that you called Luke and you wanted to tell us that he used to be Luke. Simple as that. It's Jake Skywalker. Nickname people gave to him. Oh, it was, it was what? It was a waiting... Someone in the chat said waiting for the random shot at CinemaSins. I'm sure we'll get that. Oh, <laughs> pull Star Destroyers out of the sky and becoming a Super Saiyan, I guess. But Luke Skywalker is what? not a power fantasy. I mean, I, I, no one such, ever what, said yeah, who, other... who are you countering with this? Who, who are you talking to? Yes. Who is, who is saying, I want to see Luke pull Star Destroyers out of the space? <laughs> it's like, okay, good for I you. I read every comment, guys. I read every yeah, comment. Yeah, that's, that's the most consistent thing people were saying. They wanted to see Luke pull Star Destroyers out of space. That was That's what I was reading everywhere. <laughs> that's what me and Wolf said. I think that was the end of both of our videos. We said the biggest issue was that he didn't pull Star Destroyers out of space. A New Hope is not a bad ordinary kid. Why isn't he kid? just like Starkiller? Yeah, I was going to say, I'm surprised. He must, he, maybe he's referencing that. He just doesn't want to admit it. I don't know. But Luke Skywalker is not a power fantasy. A New Hope is not about an ordinary kid becoming the biggest badass in the galaxy. It's about an ordinary kid who wants to be a part of something greater, to have a purpose in the universe. And as his story goes on, he does that, but finds out that it's way more complicated than he thought. Why are you saying this like it counters something? It's so bizarre. It, you know, it's funny how he said, um that we don't understand Luke Skywalker. He says, uh, yeah, everything so far he said about Luke is correct. And he's saying like, it like, you see, no you were wrong otherwise. the whole time. It's like, no, this is what we are saying. <laughs> Stop, what are you doing? Turns out his family is a fucking mess. It turns out that he's a little bit angry and every so often he needs to put on some disturbed and get dark. Oh, Jesus. I oh. hate you for putting Disturbed on here. Oh, God. Not because I don't like Disturbed, because I do like Disturbed. I just hate that you're using it. I can't believe he's used that to... on this scene. Oh, way to sap the emotional value with <laughs> fucking Disturbed. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, I'm, I, that, just oh. the fact that, like, I'm not going to associate him with Disturbed, and I don't like that. Oh, Jesus, why couldn't you have picked <laughs> anything else? Stop it. <laughs> Luke's a complicated guy, oh. and to return to him 30 years later and have him be an ultra-powerful paragon of goodness would be pretty boring. Oh my good what? god. At least explain how he can be from one to the other, that's what people are arguing. Jesus Christ, it's simple as that. If, we, if Luke was Luke, it would have been boring. <laughs> that's how that works. <laughs> if Luke is Luke, would be boring. <laughs> you know who else is complicated? Ray. It's weird that no. she gets accused- Oh, no, Jesus Christ, no. he's gonna hug you, Ray's no. complicated. Ray's do you remember the, what? Do you remember oh. the scene where Ray says, uh, 
he says, why are you here, Ray? And she's like, I have no idea. <laughs> because there's nothing to go on. She has no idea what's going on. <laughs> to being a flawless character who never makes mistakes because, man, she has got problems. She has what? no idea. What, what you're gonna have to really, <laughs> really lie about the narrative this time. You're gonna have to stretch the yes. seeds as best you can. Yeah, what to do with herself what and keeps running to different people. Have? Yeah, that's true. She does. She does seem and, to connect with different people. Actually, roll, roll in, like, back, roll back, roll back, roll back, roll back. Oh, uh, she's doing the feminist face now. <laughs> Would be pretty boring. You know who else is complicated? Ray. It's weird that she gets accused of being a flawless character who never makes mistakes because, man, she has got problems. She has no oh. idea what to do. See, oh, I can't oh, help. Oh, she, she has a problem. I can't she, help but see him as very, he's very manipulative in the way he just said that, right? The, he deliberately throws in the the idea. So instead of saying, people are saying that she has no flaws and they cite these as reasons, I'm going to argue against that. Instead of that, he skips over those people as if they're irrelevant. He's like, man, does she have so many flaws? It's like... No, you know that that is that is the complete opposite of the the most common things said about Ray. It's like you're doing it to quickly get rid of it. You're like, no, the idea that she has no flaws, out of the way, out of the way. You're like we're not talking about that. We're talking. We're going to talk about all these things that I'm just going to make up. For fuck's sake. Has got problems. She has no idea what to do with herself. And Why is it, no idea what to do with herself? That's the writer's fucking problem. It makes her non-human. She's like, she had a goal that she just forgets about it. Now she's just following. She's like a pinball inside a pinball machine. She's just like, whoa, whoa, I'm over here now. Whoa, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go see Luke. I fine, I guess. Whoa, oh, now I'm getting trained by Luke. Sort of not. Re I'm gonna go to Kylo now. Woo! I have no reason to do any of these things, but yeah. Ray is kind of like well, that that guy who's trying to join your group of friends, but none of you actually want him to be there, and you're just kind of <laughs> hoping that he'll leave at some point. And he has like no interests that you can discern. You're like, what do you like? And he's like, oh, stuff. <laughs> like. <laughs> Neat. Sort of guidance. She plainly states. Also, also, wait a I second. I really someone? like how he says Show that. Show me my place. I really like how he says that Ray has so many flaws, has so many flaws because she doesn't have. She she has no idea what to do, and yet she can like fly the, the Millennium Falcon like early on, like without even it just, any sort of training. Yeah, like not knowing where you want to go today. That's not really what people call a flaw. You'll be you'll be, you'll be all right, especially if you're as powerful as her. You, you, the, the, as flaws go, you know, everyone else is dealing with, like, addiction or uh, just sins in general, like pride and stuff. She's just like, yeah, I, I'm not sure where I'm going, to, to be honest. I might go over there. And they're like, oh, I hope that works out for you. And she's like, who knows? We'll find out episode nine, I suppose. Different people hoping they'll provide her with some sort of guidance. She plainly states it. I need someone to show me my place in all this. And this brings us to the incredible moment when Kylo Ren reaches out his hand and offers her a place she can belong. These- uh, We have no idea what he's even really offering her. He's just like, let's- let's go to somewhere. Let's leave the First Order and- and go somewhere. Maybe to a planet. Chill out somewhere. I can show you the galaxy. Like, let's be honest. <sighs> if she'd taken his hand and he was like, let's get into a shuttle, and then they just fly away, it would be like, Ray, what are you doing? What's, what's the plan here, Ray? <laughs> like, what, what, what's what's going to happen now? Like, don't you... This, this is the part that really fucks with my mind, is that she furiously hates him at the end of Force Awakens and the beginning of this film, and it takes her, like, the story that Luke saw a bad future in Kylo to convince her that Kylo is worth saving. It's like, but you've seen that Luke was right? He did have a bad... It's like, yes, but Luke caused it. It's like... Luke didn't ask Kylo yeah. to kill all the students, you idiot. Yeah, let's ignore all the genocides that Kylo committed. It's just, it's, it's... it's insane. It doesn't make any sense at all. And it's just, it, it, they look at it as layered. They look at it as complicated. And you're like, oh, I guess. I guess you could look at it like that. Movies have had a lot of moments where bad guys ask good guys to join them. But this was the first time that I thought there was a chance the good guy might actually accept. And that is the mark of good storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even tell us why. It's just she didn't uh, know where she was going. So why not join the bad guys, I suppose? It wouldn't <laughs> have made any sense. She has investments in the good guys. She knows all of the good guys. Why would she go with Kylo? It wouldn't make any sense.
I just if she had and this is the thing with how badly written the film is I could have seen her going with him and I would have made a video about how it doesn't make any fucking sense that she would have gone with him but she didn't so that's not where we are but interesting that you just call it good writing it's, fan it's fa fascinating so I've talked a lot about how I wanted this movie to push Star Wars forward and do new things and it did all of that but I also said I wanted a rip roar and good time and it is absolutely 100% that <laughs> The thing begins with the space- I mean, yeah, if characters say woo, you know, that's mm. all you need at that point. Um, Wait, didn't he say this before? Like, what? Um, didn't he say that, well, it, I, I just want a good time, and then he proceeds to say it's one of the best battles, like... Well, if he's- I, I mean, yeah, he definitely has complimented the battle already, but why not just do it again, you know? 100% that. <laughs> The thing begins with a space battle and ends with a desperate last stand where the resistance has nothing to use but MS-DOS computers and janky little- What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fighters on a salt planet and porgs are popping up everywhere and- Why- why is- why is that a positive? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Phasma has a sweet spear. Phasma has a sweet spear. Sure. And every single thing in the scene rules so hard- no Except the choreography. <laughs> Sure, everything rules. Oh, oh my god, he, he's he's fanboying so much like a freaking child, like... <laughs> I know, he's, there's no like discussion it's... anymore, it's just, this is good, even if it's awful, this is good. It's like, okay... Up everywhere and Phasma awesome. has a sweet spear, and every single thing in this scene rules so hard, and also this is the funniest goddamn thing. I feel something. You feel it? Yes, I feel it. That's the force. Really? Wow, it must be really strong oh, with you. I've never felt any... Ow! And yeah, guys. This movie is. I mean, I'm fine with that joke, but it doesn't save yeah, the movie. That, 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 uh, that, that scene was funny, but it doesn't save the movie. Funny. I know you love old sourpuss Christopher Nolan and that stoic dour tone he brings to everything, but. What? Uh, wh what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> where, did, where did that come from? He kind of, he kind of did that in the last Jedi too. Like, what's, what's with the, <laughs> what's with the Nolan hate? That was weird. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh. Yeah, just, Carry just on. fuck, Carry fuck on. Christopher Nolan and his films. Sourpuss Christopher Nolan and the stoic dour tone he brings to everything, but lighten up. You ever see Goodfellas? That movie <laughs> is funny. It's also scary. What the hell are you doing right now? What? Arguing that there's comedy what? What? and dramatic films? Infinity War came out in this year. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. What was the movie that he said it was funny? Goodfellas. Wait, <laughs> what? I, uh, uh, okay. I guess it I needs mean, to have one is, joke but... in it for it to be as good as The Last Jedi. I guess that's the require. I have no idea what's going on anymore. <sighs> Wolf, you alive? Go on. Yeah, Wolf is dead. <laughs> Patrick killed him. He's dead. Very He's dead. intense and emotionally devastating. A movie can make you feel different things. Humor is good. Why am I even explaining this? You have to yes, explain yes. it because it was totally balked. You can have comedy and drama, but you don't do what fucking Ryan Johnson did. No, no, nobody's even, nobody's even <laughs> arguing that the that the humor is like. Has anyone even argued that the humor in the Last Jedi was bad? Well, I've definitely heard people argue that the the, the joke, like the the Yo Mama joke, didn't exactly land for a lot of people, did it? And I have to yeah. return. He's, he's just uh, said, Wolf, in defense of the humor in The Last Jedi, that there is humor in films, you know. What? Don't you agree? Are you saying there isn't humor in good films? Is that what you're saying? You know, dramatic I think, films? I think leave again, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and unrelated, but I just want to mention how much I love Adam Driver's delivery of... Blow that piece of junk! Yeah, I loved him going <laughs> right back to being a cartoon after baiting yes. development and then removing it. It was great. Yeah, God, yeah. look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> this is a movie about moving on. Moving on from failures and selfishness and self-loathing and empty heroics. Moving on from only certain families being- And those are nice ideas, but they executed them horrifically badly. ...being special yeah. and everything being like it was 30 years ago. Moving on from the same old story beats and the same old status quo. Which they brought back and then re-established and continued. They did not break it at all. Even oh, people shit, who- only got three minutes left. I'm so excited. Come on! Even people who liked uh, The we Last Jedi will usually cite that it's such a shame that Kylo became, you know, the Emperor, basically and that we're back to being Rebels versus Empire again.
Just like, don't mention that part though, yeah. Patrick. Don't mention it. I love Star Wars. I love there the world don't. and the characters and the feeling I get every time that the title hits the screen as the fanfare explodes out of the speakers. And watching The Last Jedi, I was hit by a thought. For the first time, I could see this story continuing for decades to come. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they can run it right into the ground, mate. Thing. You are right. We should stop. They're gonna make There's millions. There's a point where you have to stop. That would, dude, I'm not even kidding. When I saw that scene, my takeaway was, oh, they have an excuse to make a million Star Wars films now. That's the only reason this scene exists. You know, they, you can't just keep a series going forever because it tends to turn into shit every time. What long-running series? Well, funnily enough, James Bond is just up and down and up and down. Like, there's good ones, bad ones, good ones, bad ones. The latest one was awful, as far as I yes. know. I haven't actually Spectre? seen it. Yeah. Spectre, it was the. Yeah, a lot of people didn't like it, but there's a new Bond well, coming, as far as I know. Well, yeah, but doesn't James Bond... I'm not super familiar with... I'm not at all familiar with the James Bond films. Isn't it, like... It's not all the same continuous story. It's more like... No. It's almost a genre. It's practically just a spy. Yeah, so, like each film is so only connected kind of by genre, like, really. More like superhero films in that sense. Yeah. So it's not just the yeah. same continuous story. At some point, you can't you can't continue the same story forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You can't. Well, obviously, they can jump to another part of the galaxy or universe even and have no references to any of the characters that we know and love or whatever. Which, by the way, I'd be on board with because you can just make something with Star Wars. Uh, I don't know, rules in the universe, obviously, because the Force is quite a fun thing to, to mess around with. Bounty hunters are cool. You can make loads of alien things. But, like, no, if they carry on with Rey, it's just going to go on and on. And this is the thing. I think some people on this planet thought that maybe we could fast forward by a million years and we have, like, thousands of Star Wars films. And you know what? Maybe more than half of them were good. Maybe that could happen. But, like, yeah. The Last Jedi has fucking killed so many people's investments. It's like, mm, no, I'd rather you just stop making them now. <laughs> yeah, like, Solo Bomb, for God's sake. Like, it's... The... the How Solo Bomb, it's just... It's, it's astonishing. Like, it's also, it's funny, Star Wars. you'll find a lot of people are, like, bombed. Oh, so it made 420 million or whatever, and you consider that bad? It's like... You, you, you judge it by how much they spent. <laughs> like that's how it works. Yes. If you spend two hundred fifty million on fucking marketing, then any film is going to make a lot of money. I mean, assuming you can make yeah. a good trailer instead of it being god awful. But yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. We'll, mm. we'll genuinely, I think the damage the Last Jedi has done will be found in the box office for Episode Nine rather than Solo. But Solo mm. definitely shows blood in the water, if you will. Yes. It was the moment in the Battle of Crete when the Millennium Falcon arrives with Chewie in the pilot seat and Rey operating the gun turret. My mind flashed forward years from now, and I thought about how we'll talk about Star Wars in terms of eras. There will be constants through the series, the Millennium Falcon will remain, but we'll talk about the era when Han Solo owned it, or the I, era when Rey... Oh, I hope it doesn't remember. Or when L3 piloted uh, it. <laughs> Never remember that era? <laughs> Or when L3 became it. Oh, all of it. <sighs> Great. Jesus. Raided. And this was all because of things The Last Jedi did. This was no longer a story about special people from a few select bloodlines. That's not what... That's, that was what, never what, the restriction. What, it was what, never... <sighs> what bloodline did Anakin have? born out of nothing and then literally. what about all the people on the jedi council were they all from skywalker's lineage or something like come on that's not what they were saying sky he was just legendary to he was, he was prophesied to be the most powerful jedi that's that's the, and they judged it by midichlorian count or whatever maybe that's potential i'd have to look at the actual explanation for it because i can't remember but the prequels and the ot never said you have to come from a bloodline to be powerful or to be a force user, let's say. That's not a thing. You're inventing that. The That's last shot I didn't not change how shit. The force works. Like I love how they change the narrative to that. Our complaints are not that. It's that we this is crazy, I know. But we like the idea that you train, practice, and become better at a skill. That's cool to us. Because we relate yes. to that. It's something humans have to do pretty much across the board. Anything you want to do, you have to get better at it by doing it. It's a thing. You don't just automatically I become the best fucking carpenter in the world. Someone yeah, I actually really like the idea. I actually really like the idea of like new people from 
different parts of the galaxy just becoming legendary based on their own merits rather than lineage. Like, people really like that idea. It can happen, though. People That's the thing. It, it was it never like, happen. you can't have it. This is the thing. They could have traveled to a planet where there was a Force-using guy, but he wasn't like a Jedi. Mm -hmm. And it could just be like, he's, a, he's the warrior of this planet or something like that. It, it, there's, the, the, the originals never said you couldn't do that. Simple as that. He's like, no, The Last Jedi opened it up. It's like, this uh. was a story about a whole galaxy. And the people... It was a story about a space chase at a casino world. That's what it was about. There's, uh. there's no galaxy in there. Are you kidding me? The one thing that everyone pretty much universally agrees upon with the Disney trilogy is that they've made an enormous universe feel extremely small. And that mm. everyone happens to bump into each other like they're all at the supermarket. It's, it's, but I mean, this is the thing. Of course, Awakens did this better, where they made it at least kind of feel like you were in the same galaxy. Yeah, they gave, they gave us Takodano as a planet they went to, and then we had the Death Star planet. That's something. <laughs> like, I guess we got Crate Wolf, uh, so you can't complain about Hoth 2.0. All right. People who shape its future could come from anywhere. They could be anyone. From here, Star Wars could go anywhere. And each it always could, you piece of shit. <laughs> it was never limited yeah. in the first place. Should it really be anyone can just do everything, though? Well, that's, that's the that difference. Kinda... He's kind of arguing what... As if, as if... Our problem is that anybody can become Darth Vader now. And he's saying, yeah, that's great that anybody uh, is allowed to use power and train. He's like, no, 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 no. We're, we're saying that they skip the part where they become it, they just are it. And that's the problem. We're mm. fine with anyone becoming powerful over time. Just, you know, you have some goblin who's like in a sewer and he realizes he can actually move something if he really concentrates. And then we have a whole movie about him getting powerful. And then he starts his own religion. And then, you know, then the Jedi are like, no, you're a Jedi. And then, you know, that could be a story. I want to see the goblin man fight the Jedi. There's, there's my Star Wars story. There you go, Disney, make it. I'm on board. Goblin man. I want a Sith movie on Korriban. That'd be great. I want I want a horror movie in the Star Wars universe. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Oh, that, that's Star Wars Death Troopers. Not a movie, it's a book, and it's literally just Dead Space, but Star Wars. And that's what I would huh. say is actually doing a job of getting outside of what Star Wars is, more so than The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi was just like a mess. Like somebody who likes The Last Je uh, Star Wars, but thought that loads of it was wrong. Like, oh, they did this in the originals, and I didn't like that, so let's fix it. It's like, no, no, please stop it. Stop him. Each time I watch it, I found that idea more and more moving. I don't care who that kid with the broom is. It doesn't matter. What I do care about is the hope and determination I see in his eyes. <laughs> he looks pretty bored to me. <laughs> Where's the okay. hope and determination, exactly? Is so okay. I, I go over the video, it's like it's so dumb that he gets so inspired by the story from Luke when the only people who could tell it would have been from the perspective of the resistance, all they saw was him walk outside. They don't really see what happens after that, they just like have to assume. And then from the perspective of the stormtroopers, it's like Oh well he was a ghost holo he was a hologram. Uh yeah. I don't know what, and it's someone's like, "Oh, that sounds really heroic." It's like, I don't know what it was. <laughs> he just he was there, and then he was gone. I don't know. Like, why would kids get inspired by that compared to the story of Luke and his friends taking down the Death Star twice and obliterating the fascistic government? Like, how how are they even remote? Thirty years ago, and that has managed to become a story that's fallen into myth so hard that nobody finds it inspiring. It's like, how sad is that? You're a Jedi, Harry. <laughs> Ever since George Lucas made that first film, Star Wars has been about how an ordinary person can escape their circumstances and become a part of something greater. And The Last Jedi is, is a movie that understands that. Okay, and now because I couldn't find a more natural way to incorporate them into the speech, I want to just mention a bunch of random little things I love in this movie. Uh -huh. The incredible texture and color palette of Steve Yedlin's cinematography. John Williams' score and how he weaves together countless leitmotifs from the entire series. Things that you could say about pretty much all the Star Wars films. Or any yes. film in this, general. Yeah, a lot of mainstream, highly budgeted films these days. And I'm not even saying that as a criticism. I'm saying that when you have a very high budget, you can afford the very best lighting and, and camera and, and CGI artists. And I'm not saying that their craft isn't appreciable. It is appreciated, but <sighs> it's unfair because the people who make indie films, who only have them, two friends, and $10 to make a film with, but have an incredible story, 
by this guy's standards, it would be like, nah, it was shit. And then he's like, the shit... Someone, <laughs> someone in the chat pointed out that this contradicts what he said because apparently he said that the score was boring and forgettable. Did he? Wait, really? When? Did he? I, I don't know. It was just someone that... Someone said it in the chat. I don't know if it's actually true or not, to be honest. Yeah, because I was going to say, he didn't say it in the plot holes video, but I haven't seen all of his Star Wars stuff. This line. Wipe that nervous expression off your face, 3 po The Giallo-esque design of Snoke's chamber. R2's cheap trick. When the Porgs are poking at the lightsaber. When the sad Porg looks at Chewie. Wait. When the Porgs scree- Oh, what? God. Okay. okay. Dude, this is all good stuff about the movie. I'm sorry, but if, if you just- They're small. If you just listen off the Porg moments, I'm starting to, like, be like, oh, that's that's what you're looking for. Okay. Uh, the super. To be fair, these are small. Yeah. Mus are very music. Music. Things that you like. Music visuals wait, wait, and music isn't small. No, I'm <gasps> saying he's listing music things. Music isn't small. He's listing everything outside of the fucking writing. We're just like, oh. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone is in agreement that the movie didn't sound good. So I thought yes. this movie was. I thought this video rather was supposed to be explaining the things that people are more contentious about, which is the story. But, uh, no one's really contentious about like, I got frustrated. how good some of the shots are. Um, I got frustrated at some of the music because it was like, I got I got the whole, th you know, like if it was a great movie and then they they uh, referenced the oh, old yeah, music. You're, you're talking about how they reused the Death Star. Run but like, if I the, liked uh... the film, I might have enjoyed that. But because I was getting so frustrated, I was like, don't you fucking take their music. Put it back. <laughs> it's, like, it's not yours. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not that I disliked the music. It's just that like, most of it was just remakes of songs we already had in the previous movies, and everything that was new didn't stand out enough for me to remember any of it. Mm. Well, just during battle, when the Porg hits the window, when- Jesus Christ, is he actually gonna cite every single Porg thing? Chewie swats the Porg off the dashboard. The Porgs are great. Every Porg. Por oh, jeez, man. You're like uh, Disney's favorite customer. <laughs> they made this for you, I think. But remember, he said he's not a shill, and no, no. reviewer ever chill. No. I mean, not a shill. But he also said this is meant for children. <laughs> I don't know what we're supposed to it's assume. It's meant for him. This is meant for him. Yeah. But Yoda, the what way DJ wears his was. boots around his neck. The, the way DJ wears his boots around his neck. And this is the guy who's saying that we need to stop trying to critique films because we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Okay. What does DJ wearing his boots around his neck <laughs> add to his character at all? It was cool, <sighs> shut up. Moment when Hux thinks cool. he can kill Kylo, when Poe rubs BB-8's belly, the whole design of crate so that as warfare breaks out on the planet, it actually looks like it's bleeding. Luke's wink at C-3PO. The way Luke first saw Leia via a projection and the last time she sees him is a projection. See? It rhymes, like Lucas loves. This is a weird movie to talk I Don't even, this is so, <sighs> these connections are so irrelevant, like so tiny. Uh, uh, so they, they be, okay. they, they would be what I would call neat picks. It's like, you just highlighted little things that just have no fucking relevance. <laughs> People are pointing out in the uh, chat, BB-8 has a belly. <laughs> Apparently, I don't fucking know. Apparently. According to Patrick of House Willems, he's a very esteemed uh, critic about this video ended up being longer than it should need to be because it's not enough to say why i think the movie is good I it's longer than it needs to be because he didn't have enough time to say why it, what okay just go go one more time with that one like lucas loves this is a weird movie to talk about this video ended up being longer than it should need to be because it's not enough to say why i think the movie is good i also have to pre so the, the, the point of the video is to say why it's great, and the video ended up being longer than it needed to be because well, not it was as hard. long as it needed to be. He's, like, he said it's longer than it needed to be, what? but he needed to explain why it's good when the intention was to explain why it's great. I am so confused by that line. But go ahead. <laughs> he emptively responds to all the people who are going to say, but why didn't you talk about this thing that's bad? Months ago, I said there was no way I would make this video, but the truth is that since December, I haven't stopped thinking about The Last Jedi. <laughs> but it's a kid's movie, dude. Okay. It's a kid's movie, dude. Okay, man, child. Okay, Isn't there a kid's child. movie? You stop thinking about the kid's movie. You gotta be more adult and think about adult things. Stop thinking about the kid's movie. And to all the people who hate it, I wish that you could see what I see. Because 
I wish that you could understand a single argument that was thrown against you and not straw man it. And besides, That's what I wish. Patrick, give me one movie you do not like. Just give me one, and then I'll throw the exact same statement back at you. I wish you could see what I see in the room. <laughs> I wish you could understand uh. the quality of the room. It's like... Je oh, it's like watching someone eat shit, and then you go, "Whoa, all right, you, you good man." He's like, "I wish you could taste what I taste." You're like, "I'm all right. <laughs> I'm gonna just, I'm gonna eat real food. You can eat, <laughs> you can eat that, dude. I'm good." Oh. Not an argument is the short version of what I just said. Go on. And we're done, guys. Thank you so much. You were fantastic as always. Now I am going to take this footage and put it online. I'll see you later. <laughs> What, what, what about your parents? Well, you're, you're well, gonna, it's gonna be gonna for this. This will be the gag, I guess. This will be the payoff. You don't think anyone is actually going to watch that, do you? I don't know. I would. No one cares about you. Wow. Right. But I say See. Jedi Schmedi. <laughs> no. <laughs> Perfect. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. All right, I, I think that deserves another one. He, he, he likes his his Squarespace and his, I'm assuming Audible. It's where you can learn to learn about the Last Jedi, learn about writing. It'll be great, even though you can't really learn about writing because there's no such thing as good or bad writing. So, <sighs> yeah, that was it. We did it. Um. I Yay. don't. I don't really know how to sum up that video. It, it, um... He likes the milk titty monster scene. I think that's a good summary. <laughs> I mean, to explain why the, the Last Jedi is great, it's like you could have done way better than that. I could have done better than that. Like, yes, you. It's so meandering, because he went from like, let me do a huge disclaimer for why anybody who doesn't already agree with me is an asshole. It's like, okay. And he was like, let me name a bunch of things that apparently aren't serious reasons for why it's good. Then let me re... sort of... So, like, <laughs> revise how the actual scenes went and describe to you that characters are X without explaining it. And then ends with uh, a bunch of random tiny things like Porgs are awesome. So, yeah. yeah. That's it. Uh, I get that you like the film. I do not understand from what you've just given there any sort of reason why. I, I don't follow. Even a little bit. I still... D yeah, it would be much better if you just come on in and just talk, like, debate, or... Well, I mean, just if, if Just Right... Why you actually like it. If Just Right was any thing to go by, you present them a contradiction, and then they will say it doesn't matter. And that's how the conversation oh. will go every time. Wait, 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 wait. Wasn't that video that, that he shilled about Just Right, the actual video that you were watching before Just Right came in? No, we watched his follow-up one that explained that everybody has a different opinion on things. Oh. In, in case you had no idea about that. Oh, jeez. I was gonna say, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I just shared that with you, because you probably didn't know. You probably uh, weren't aware that everybody is different. It's fascinating stuff. <sighs> um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll probably be able to do some form of another video, but I was going to say, uh, podcast name. Everybody use that link who's not used it already, and you can vote on what name you think the podcast should have. I think that probably one of the most narratively suitable names is currently winning, but, I mean, the top two choices are pretty good. Um, uh, I guess I should read Super Chats as well, because I've let, I've let them flow for, for a while. And When you... Uh re-upload this on your Mooler channel, you should put this straw poll in the... It'll be description. in the description, yeah. That'll make sense. I'll probably put it in the uh, top comment. Um, That's true. So where where are we? Uh, YouTube police, more like Yifgate. I mean, that's the that's, that's actually made me think um, we're still hoping to get YMS on something like this eventually. And him, him and Wolf have that... They share that language that, uh, that I am far too... Uh, high class to be able to engage in <laughs> it's um it, it, it's it's still a hope for anybody who's wondering i'm not sure what's going to happen though cuz uh i don't know if it feels if we couldn't get er it feels very unlikely that we get yms but you know maybe well at least yms like responds er just <laughs> vanishes 
for long periods of time. This is true. But he did, he started um, a Patreon recently, so maybe we'll be seeing more of a, more presence from him eventually. Like, if he tries to go full-time, I think that's his issue right now, is that he's not... Uh, the reason you can't understand their logic is because there is none. It's not supposed to make sense. You're supposed to follow without question. You're applying logic to illogical people. In fairness, he did actually make the video where he pretty much spat on logic, so... Mm. Mm. Those are all terrible. I thought the podcast names were alright. I thought they were pretty good. <laughs> uh, if you guys have got better suggestions, you know, if you want to keep keep an eye on the chat, Wolf, or, or, or Apple Bandit, like, if you guys think that, uh... They come up with better names. We'll we'll go for it. If you remember, all the ones that are in there right now are all suggested from the audience. So, um, someone said KFP Kentucky Fried Porgs. What for a podcast uh, name? I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I just thought it was funny. Uh, there's only one T in Ireland. And that's Barry's. I don't get it. If it's a reference, fucking space wizards. That opening scene in TFA was really intended for children. Oh yeah, you know when they massacre all the innocent people. You guys remember that bit? All the innocent yeah. villagers who are like begging for uh, mercy and they all get killed. Yeah, that was a strictly a kids movie. Um, oh yeah, we read that one. Uh, it takes talent to have a five head and zero points. What? A five head? Is he talking about? <laughs> oh, because because Patrick Williams has. I I think five head would be underestimated. You know when you put like your four fingers on your forehead that connects. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I get it, but um. I mean, no offense yes, to no, no. Like, I'm really not trying to be a dick here, but like, I've seen people's hairlines that are stronger than Patrick Williams. It's like you may as well shave at that point because <laughs> I don't know, like, how far back that is. I don't think I've seen it go that far back on a person that age that hasn't decided to shave it. You know, most people do. Yeah, like, look, I'm I'm 21, and I will admit it's not something I like to admit to because it's not something I like, but. Male pattern baldness runs in my family, and I got it at 21, and I'm not happy about it, but I would never let it get to that point. I just shave it bald, because at least I can grow a beard. Yeah, do the... go Kratos. Mm. Why not? Uh, yeah. yeah. Wolf and Mola do a podcast with playing. Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. He's friends with Jeff from World Class Bullshitters. I mean, there's no limit on who we could uh, have on this thing, to be honest. As long as they're okay with, like, being here for hours on end. <laughs> ripping Geeks into, like, and one Gamers video. is a lot like you, Mauler. He's, he's uh, gone up pretty quickly. Sweet. I don't, really, I don't think I know him. Mm. I do I do know him through World Class Bullshitters in terms of, like, references, but I don't think I've seen the channel. Oh, I, yeah, I, I don't know him personally, but I have seen a few. I like his stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, his only argument was there was a jab at CG, really. That's probably a reference to something that... I mean, it was it was a while ago now, so I'm not even sure. Uh, TLJ surprised me that a movie could be so Johnson. Bravo, Ryan. Bravo, Fandom Menace. Yeah, I mean, he's making another movie right now, isn't he? Some kind of... I think it's with Henry Cavill, as uh, what I've heard. Some kind of thriller spy thing or something. Or it could be someone else. But, like, everyone is now waiting to see it just to see if it's bad or something. I was like, I don't I don't particularly care. Like, it, it, I, I'm not sure. I, I guess people are going to hire him now because he's controversial. Would that be a good reason to hire a director slash writer? I don't know. Don't know. Uh, do you think his parents know he still lives with them? I hate the movie for all the reasons Mola pointed out. If you like it, great. You can ignore the narrative. This guy has never watched Star Wars ever. I don't think he lives with them. I think he visits them and I, I, I guess does these this video because i don't know why the parents were in this video to be perfectly honest with you they seem a, a kid a pointless kid he doesn't understand comedy well you like the last jedi that's all about that's all about comedy right right <laughs> his coffee pot looks like a t-rex is coming oh because of the because the vibrations under canadian military law poe following the retreat order would be illegal following the retreat order well, in, in Crate? Also, yeah, I guess we don't even know what the laws are for um, the resistance considering uh, <laughs> it's like a complete mess and there's 20 people left on a ship that's not even theirs. So... Yeah, I don't even know. Uh, if they ever established that they were unable to get better bombs, then it would have been better. I don't see why they wouldn't have access to Y-Wings, but I mean... Why would they be? Why would they have access to those bombers, uh, not bombers that are effective? It would be my question, I suppose. Um, 
Wait, wait, D didn't those bombers can do, can hyperdrive to space? Like, why, if the bombers are going to be destroyed anyway... Oh, yeah, why shit. Why do they just hyperspace everything? <laughs> if you hyperspace, hyperspace literal bombs into somebody, surely that would do massive damage. Massive damage. All of the damage, tons oh. of damage. Oh, there was also somebody in the super chat said, Oh my god, Ryan Johnson is so racist that he casted Asian people to do kamikaze bombings. <laughs> <laughs> if, if this film was, like hated by that crowd they probably would have pointed that out like honestly that's the kind of shit they do um the, the chinese really hate this film <laughs> they do they yeah uh didn't solo like barely even make even remote sense of like money like it got booted out like straight away as far as i know yeah but uh, the last jedi survived a week i think before it was pushed out so yeah uh, even the Y wings were made to be cheap, as they stripped out versions from the Clone Wars and Rebels. Even show this. I don't think it's a matter. I don't know what it is, because they they established that they buy stuff from the Canto Bite people, and for some reason they only bought literally the worst fucking ship in the history of Star Wars. They're <laughs> like, let's buy loads of those ones. Uh, Saw Civil War, and your recommendation is pretty good. Theme meme aside, what are your thoughts on the thematic connection, motivation of revenge in Stark Panther and Zemo? I mean, it's it, it would be a lot to go into. It's probably going to be in my video on the film when we get there but it's interesting you bring it up because it's something you talk about without the film beating it into your face you're like did you notice that what connects all these characters is a sense of wanting to achieve revenge while in the last jedi you're like did you notice it's like yes i noticed and you're like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> it's like how did you not notice you, was, was... civil war is a well-made film they don't really have to explain everything yeah, no, it's, it's it's very. I would I would argue it's very clear, but at least they did have a character go. Do you know revenge isn't always the best thing to do, and you need to learn to overcome it. You'd yeah. be like, oh my god, <laughs> stop. Uh, between this and a holes using the anniversary of nine eleven to take petty jabs at President Trump, why haven't we nuked Earth yet? Um, I think it'll take more than a couple of bad Star Wars films to to push that button, but uh, I'm. Yep. I'm Maybe we'll get there. Uh, the bombers could have tilted upwards and released their payload. Oh, you mean like in a way that makes it fire forward? If they have artificial gravity, uh, that actually could work. As in, it doesn't matter how slowly they they are pushed out, they would keep going. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's worth trying. <laughs> instead but, but, of but, having... but it's very slow. It's going to be very slow, though. Like traveling from the I mean, bombers. Yeah, like, it would be hilariously slow. And it would be the most stupid fucking fight in history of anything. But it would be funny as hell to watch. It's like all of the people in the Dreadnought. Like chain... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like chain destroy bomb them. Yeah, you get one TIE fighter to shoot the bomb. And it just blows up all of them. They're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> We're going to have to... <laughs> gonna have to redo it. Um... Even if it has new things, it has to be compatible with the previously established story and satisfactorily answer questions that were left open. They don't believe in that, I'm afraid. Um, yep. Then this, this has to be a troll. Thank you for making these great videos. I love the rant on the Fallen Kingdom movie. Greetings from a fan from the Netherlands. Greetings! He's just liking things people hate to be contrary. I, I don't know, I think he thinks this was a good video. Do you guys get the impression this was a parody? No. no. I don't. I think nah. this is like a real thing. <laughs> nah, even if it is, there are people who legit think that it isn't, so... Oh, of course. Uh, no Ryan Johnson has commented on this video, by the way, on Twitter. It was like a thread, and he said he's really glad that Patrick loved the movie. So, Ugh. I seriously doubt that this is meant to be a joke. Ryan Senpai noticed him. <laughs> uh, we need Jared to take on Patrick Willems. There's a couple people asking for Jared. I'm afraid we're not doing Jared anymore. Um, but this video, once yeah. it's uploaded... There's an we explanation to the channel. game. Yeah, when, when your podcast is once per month, correct? You wanna you can you can plug that if you want. Yeah, my podcast is once per month. It's gonna be next Wednesday. We're gonna have the Act Man on. A lot of people have requested Ooh. him to come on past, so he was pretty okay with coming on with us. And we will cover Jared there, but uh... and me and Rags will be there, oh. right? Oh. Is that me or is that you? That would be me. Am I 
You're speaking uh, in a vacuum here? What's going uh, on? I, I don't know if it was me or you. I think it must have been you. I don't know. Appaband didn't say anything. But it might have been my connection, but I couldn't hear a thing you were saying. I couldn't hear either. Yeah. Either. My, the connection was really bad. I don't know. Just so happened the ping was just. All right. The well, sound of robot. If if, if you okay. want to if you well, want to quickly do that again, well. <laughs> uh, what was I just talking about? Act man, oh, man. me rags podcast. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Us, act man, Jared next Wednesday. There you go. At six p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Is that gonna be live? Yes, I will. Uh, people, because I, you know, people have asked me to do both. Um, people want it live, but they also want our icons to be lit up. So at first I was like, okay, well, I'll just like do it offline, then I'll light up the icon. But people still want it live. So I'll do it live, edit it later, and put it back up afterwards. Why so don't you, you still do what I show. do? <laughs> well, I, I'm still going to do it like this kind of ish format where we're at the bottom and it's just showing the discord one but i gotta edit in the the intro because otherwise we're gonna be sitting here for five minutes saying nothing till podcast comes on so we'll be streamed live and then like within like i want to say the next day or so it'll be uploaded with the intro and shit fair enough um go watch it I think this deserves a for that. more response video just for the Milk Monster comment. Again, I think <laughs> he was joking on that point. Uh, we can give him that. But he's made such bizarre comments that we took it for 100% real. Um, assuming it isn't real. I don't, I don't 100% know for sure. Um, debate this movie with this man immediately. He won't, he's not going to talk to us. Patrick wouldn't, wouldn't want to talk to us, I don't think. Uh hmm. Here's a good question to He's ask this hippie bastard. Where does he think the resistance get their damn weapons from these one percenters? Yeah, exactly. Again, the film contradicts itself, so I don't know why we're supposed to feel that the resistance is the answer to this horrible crime when they're the ones that are propagating it anyway. Um, yeah, resistance bought weapons from Canto Bite Slavers. Let me explain why TLA is good by stating things I like and not explaining why they actually make it great. You just have boring taste. I don't want to talk to you. I mean, that could sum up the video. Progress. Wait, did they say TLA? Well, I, yeah, I guess they, <laughs> they mixed TFA the and TLJ. La the Last Awaken. <laughs> <sighs> progress towards jumping off a cliff is still progress. True. I like how Kyla's best scene, <laughs> him tricking Han in order to buy time, which feels like something Solo's son would do, was actually supposed to show him being weak when Driver played it full heel. Um, Again, I, I don't understand his character at all, Kylo's. You can see breakdowns, but the breakdowns will literally just describe the scenes to you as if it's layered and it's complicated when it's just like, huh? Why? Why is any of this happening? Kylo Ren he, is he a- He can't make up his mind what, what side he wants to take on. And again, like, I'm- if, is he gonna be full-on villain in episode 9? Like, is that gonna be- Yeah. That's gonna be fun, isn't it? What if- what if Rey fights him at the end and she beats him? Won't that be crazy? He'd be like, oh. But then if she loses yeah, we to do him- the same thing again. Oh, yeah, like, like I said, time. super curious yeah. about what they're going to do with episode 9 just for that. Some, someone in the chat pointed out that, you know, he deleted a comment on his video, so he definitely wouldn't talk to you. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people said that he deleted my comment, and then I loaded it up the other day and I couldn't find it. I don't, considering what's been going on lately on YouTube, like a lot of people say that comments get deleted, and a lot of people are like, no, they don't, they're still there. Like, I'm not saying anything definitive, but I mean, it could have been. Um... Who knows? It could be. Yeah, like, I, I don't know for sure. If there's a way to find out for sure, then, you know, fair enough. But well, he could easily just argue that it was picked up by the spam filter. Uh, then say that it just picked a random word, even though my comment is very, you know, mundane, but whatever. Um, Kylo Ren is a like poor ripoff Matthew. of Jack and Solo. This is, oh, yeah, yeah. Matthew, uh, Monday Mac gets accused of it all the time. But his videos are still filled with negative comments, you know? So this is like, I doubt he's deleted them, but if I guess he could be. At this point, anyway, maybe before, I could have definitely believed it. Um, Luke mm. says Kylo was influenced by Snoke, so Kylo had a choice between Luke and Snoke, but then Luke tried to murder him, so the choice was obvious, and Kylo just killed everyone. That's a story I'd like to see, instead of... They didn't explain it well. Like, I just don't, I don't get why you wouldn't want to show it. Like, as this kid is growing yeah. up, he's getting whispers from Snoke. And how power is, is, you know, just, it's going to have to be power, because what else would it be? And, um, mm. but yeah, it's, it's jarring, considering what we got. 
Uh, Kylo switches between face and heel more often than the big show. That, that's a reference to wrestling, and I barely watched it, but I, I knew about Big Show because I played some of the wrestling games on GameCube, and he was in it. Uh, hmm. Let me guess, Patrick doesn't want us to point out plot holes again either, right? Well, that's the thing, right? A lot of the criticisms I have of his points are recognizing the holes in the story that fuck it up, and then he'd be like, why are you, why are you talking about them? They don't matter. Uh. And I guess the, the, it comes down to, it's like, well, couldn't you argue for literally any piece of fiction that way, so every film is automatically a masterpiece? Like, I don't... <laughs> Wait, are you sorry. okay? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I was I was looking at somebody who photoshopped Idris Elba <laughs> to Siri. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought yeah. Didn't you post that already, or was it a new one? No, it the no, last one was, was Harry Cruz. Oh, this one was Idris Elba. Oh right, right. Man, I'm not getting notifications for those. That's weird. Uh, does Patrick realize he's defending a racist like ruin that casted the only two Asian people in two separate kamikaze runs? That was what you were probably talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing! Okay, I, no, I was looking at the I was looking at the Idris Elba. I am the you last post... Jedi. Oh, you, you want me to post this one? Huh? Yes, it's amazing. Are they as good as the Jeredi Mundi <laughs> one that was like? <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> you know that they would have had to search for that for a while, <laughs> like the right image to be able to make it work. Yeah, but they did so good. Uh, <laughs> they did an actual really good job there. Uh, I'll have to check my my Twitter <laughs> notifications soon. Um, oh, Finn saying it. "Rebel Scum" reminds me of Jin saying "May the Force be with you" for no reason but fan service. Yes, agreed. Uh, waiting for the random shot of Cinema Sins. Yeah, that never happened. Uh, uh, that never happened. Oh, either. unless he did it in here somewhere. Actually, wait, yeah, what's at the end? Sting, at this point, oh. at this point, Star Wars, because the last Jedi, the usual stuff, on our podcast. Hey guys, thank hey guys, you for watching. Thank you, I want to plug, plug, Thank you, LC, the LC. Wait, you. Plugs. I was just going to say, it's like reflecting back off your mic as well. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Um, I thought it was only me. I was like, why is it echoing? <laughs> help us make these videos and look i know people will be angry at this video even though it's just me talking about why i like a movie i mean you know if <laughs> if, if you actively lie no, we're not angry we're laughing if you we're lie laughing. about what I happens in the movie it. and you shit on the people that didn't like it right at the beginning you could probably picture why people might have a problem with it you also very vitriolically told people to shut up about plot holes like why do you pretend like you're some kind of innocent creature just sharing your perspective he needs oh. to put a couple more parentheses on either side of that H. Patrick didn't do Please nothing. don't send me a 2,000 word email about why I'm wrong because I won't read it. And look, this is the last uh, time I'm going to talk about Star Wars or The Last Jedi in a video for a while. Good. At least okay, for the rest of the I'll year. Okay, I'll keep that word. And I'll what is a while in your idea? Is it like two days? <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if he like does this maybe next year. He'd be like, oh well, I guess he's going to have to talk about episode 9, isn't he? You'd be like, uh, people are still angry. I can't, dude, imagine episode 9 is, like, good, <laughs> and then all the people who loved episode 8 are like, Patrick, episode 9 is terrible. They, like, ruined Star Wars. <laughs> It'd be so funny if that ends up happening. It's just <sighs> exhausting at this point, and I've said everything I want to say. I'm so sure it is exhausting. It just makes shit yes. up. What the hell is he... It's so exhausting to do the things I want to do. <laughs> it's like, okay. Ugh. It's just so exhausting. It's un unfortunate for you. Uh, Nolan Envy. That's, that's probably tied to it. He's probably annoyed that everyone appreciates Nolan films while everyone's shitting on the Ryan Johnson ones. I mean, not all of Nolan films, but a lot of people like Looper, so, you know, calm down. You're uh, right. Looper was bleh. I didn't like Looper that much, but a lot of, I know a lot of people did like it. <laughs> that's the point. Yeah, uh, a lot of people did like it, but I was... Yeah. yeah uh, there's, there's a lot of discussion about the choreography in the throne room fight, but the one thing no one can deny is the fact that they edited out a knife in order to save Rey from dying. That's something that actually happened. So, have you... Oh, have you, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, I saw that. Like, people who love that fight, are they literally going to say, like, that doesn't matter. That's not important. <laughs> it's like, okay, fine, nothing matters. <sighs> Hope is like the sunrise. It's true. My parents would stroke out if I was him. Probably. Uh, he... He probably has an IMDb page dedicated to poorly written comedies. I mean, 
I, he thinks that he's got like a way better perspective on this than than us because we're just random dudes who didn't go to film school so he probably wouldn't take you seriously on that comment anyway uh please do this every frame of pause with the last jedi is amazing by major lee um we, that video is actually in our suggestion thing we've got like a backlog but i just got through all the super chats that i've ignored for like two hours so that's actually feels like an achievement now um so we we have choices here since we're up to three hours you guys we we can end and t talk about you know maybe doing it another time or we could go for another video i have one but it's just a very short video well oh How you have like a suggestion short. it's just a short video showing what rags has been doing huh well, like a, criti a criticism one or a, or a good one? No, 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 not a criticism of him. Just him receiving a prosthetic leg. It's kind of cute. Oh, like, you mean it's an actual doggo getting a prosthetic leg. You want to watch that on this? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We're usually very evil to things. <laughs> Maybe we can find a way to be evil about this. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll nitpick the dog video. All right. You, did, did you think that would sound good on our end? Because it doesn't. It sounds horrible. When did Just Right oh, show? It sounded so bad. Uh, Just Right promoted Patrick Williams on Twitter uh, a lot, and I don't know if he might have him in his newest video, considering he put him in this video. So, and Backstroke of the West. Oh, shit, it's a Twitter video. Everyone wants us to see Backstroke of the West as well at some point. It's on. It's on a to-do list. There's just so many things to do and see. Um, well, in that case, I don't have it. It's a Twitter video. <laughs> Watch some downward Bilbo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, because I, I don't know if... I haven't really got any video suggestions that are like below 10 minutes or anything. And considering we just did three hours out of out of a 20-minute video, that's actually insane. It must have been... Hey, it's better than five and a half on two 11-minute videos. That is true. And, you know, yeah. just just it's not supposed to be a five-hour podcast every time, guys. It's all It's all good. <laughs> That's not supposed to be what we're yeah. aiming for. I mean, I mean, three is pretty... <laughs> three is enough. Yeah, and if this is going to be weekly, don't worry. We shall return. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I'm, yes. I'm, I'm happy enough to uh, to stop there. Are you guys, you guys feeling feeling good? Yeah. yeah. Yes? In, in that Ew, so sorry that Rex didn't come. Two. What? One <laughs> at a time. <laughs> Someone said we should watch AVP2, and it's like... Uh, what? No. We can't just watch anything. <laughs> we'll get flagged. Um, yeah. Even if we did, I just I just don't want to watch AVP two ever again. Yeah. No, that was. It's, it's too freaking dark. You can't even see shit. Oh, that's in that's the least of its problems. That's such a terrible film. So yeah, I'll just say. So again, last chance to vote on the straw poll. I'll just spam it again. We're we're gonna be deciding if figuring out a name, whichever one sounds the best. It's not gonna it's not too important, but it'd be nice to actually have titles instead of uh, nothing. Um, this video that you're listening to right now will not be on my channel. It'll be on my second one, which is linked by here. So, you know, subscribe if you want to see it. And um, our guest this week, the first ever guest we had, it was beautiful. Uh, was was Appabend, and his channel will be going into the. Uh, oh wait, pl sell your channel. Why should they subscribe to you? <laughs> he's brown. Uh, he's I'm brown. <laughs> hmm. No, I mean, well, my channel is actually no. I, I wouldn't plug it because my videos are garbage. But if you want to check it out, it's right there, right down below. <laughs> Did it? Does it show up for you guys? Because for me, chat's like frozen now. Uh, yeah, no, chat's my still moving up for me. Either one of some. If you, either of you want to post that in there, so one of my mods can spam it instead. Because apparently, I'm. Maybe I'm timed out. My chat's just stopped working. No, 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 no. You already posted it. Already oh, okay, posted. good. <laughs> because chat's not working for me now. I, just, I, I hope it's still around. Yeah, anyway. that'll happen with your chat. <laughs> but, oh, there you go. It's, it's come back. Um, and yes, okay, uh, what, uh, may as well, what, what's happening next on your on your channel, Apple Ben? What are you covering next? Well, um, I'm not really sure. Uh, probably just going to do a stream. Just stream a bunch of memes and really weird videos and hot takes on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But um, other than that, I'm not really sure. It depends entirely on the what's really hot today. But yeah. Uh, also, oh, I forgot. I was about to do um, a review of uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's one of the games that I've been wanting to play 
because the previous two has been really not great. And I really want this game to at least do something. <sighs> oh. But other than that, <laughs> not much. That's interesting. Why, why? Go on, conflict. By each it's other. It's interesting because I, I also want to watch, or watch, uh, review Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But I, I liked the last two games. <gasps> oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Oh, really? I, I liked the second one more in terms of gameplay. I thought its story was shit in the second one. Exactly. Exactly. That's my point. The story of the first two games were not great, but the gameplay was pretty good. I love I loved the gameplay. It's fun. Wolf implied that you liked the first story. The first game was all right. <laughs> fight, the second fight, game, though, I, it's just like, it's like, uh, well, we're not really going to be able to fight about much in the second game because the second game's story was legitimately shit. Thought the first game, I mean, the first game's story was like, yeah, it's okay. It's not anything amazing but it was like eh, i liked it fun mm -hmm. no response how about that Damn. er's cora video sucked fight me well <laughs> you're wrong er's cora video sucked no <laughs> no I, 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 I love the Korra video. It's fun as fuck for someone who has, hasn't even got a context I, I feel like i could explain to people why Korra is terrible without having seen it it's, uh, he even tries to like argue for it at certain points. He's like, "Oh, this this is kind of a good idea that they could use," and then they ruin it. But um, yeah, so yeah, Cor uh, season one, like I I've watched all entirety of Korra. Season one was okay. Like it's nothing great, but I can certainly see see people why I hated it. Season two was fucking shit. It was garbage. The last two seasons was eh, it was too late to be good. So I just can say it's a mixed bag overall. Cora. Uh, Wolf, what's happening on your channel soon, next? Uh, I got a video on The Grey coming out in the next few days. I haven't oh. had a whole time, actually. Speak, speak, speaking of Liam Neeson films, um, <laughs> <Okay>. have you seen... <laughs> speaking of Liam Neeson films, have you seen any of the... Like, what was that Liam Neeson film where he was on a... Was it on a plane? Was it on a plane or was it on non a train? Stop non -stop. Yeah. Non -stop, yeah. Non-stop, yeah. Non-stop, I thought that film... What, what do you think about a film? It was stupid, but it was fun as fuck. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I mean, when I uh, went up to my friend to ask if he wanted to see it, I was like, hey, you want to watch him shoots people on an airplane? And he was like, yes. <laughs> so that's really all we needed to know. <laughs> wait, someone just asked, also, um, what is that shit wait. Patrick has for sale? I was like, I don't even, I don't know, because there's a thing on the screen. <laughs> this is a person's face, so I no, can't. No, no, actually... no, just hover, hover, hover to that. Hover to that picture. Yeah. That's a channel. The channel's name is very weird. Sappho of Lesbos. Less boss. <laughs> Elsie the intern, I... I guess. That's his intern. But it just looks funny because it's like I'm selling a shirt with just his face, like maximized onto it. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's actually, that's actually the channel. It, it no, I know. His actual, <laughs> his actual Elsie shirt. His actual shirt is uh, just. What a wonderful name. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, so the gray, what else you got? Uh, working on an objectivity video. Controversial. Oh, I would love to see that. You make a lot of enemies I've been that seeing one. you, like, just <laughs> roasting people on Twitter. Yeah, I, I'm still working on it. Uh, not finished yet. The gray video will be out first, because that one I used to have the script and video footage for. Mm -hmm. I just need to actually record it and then edit it all together. Objectivity video. I don't know when that's going to be out. Still working on the Lord of the Rings video. But yeah, Act Man on the podcast next week, Wednesday, 6 p.m. EST. There you, there go. you go. And for me, I'm going to do a video on the Predator when I finally see it. And then I'm back to working on the TFA, which is <laughs> month, month number four or five. But uh, I'm actually getting there. The, the editing has begun, but it's being paused in favor of the Predator. But it should speed up. Wait, and. Uh... Hmm? The Predator is gonna be released tomorrow in my time on my time, so I, 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 I will see it too. Apparently, they have they have MCU level humor in there that is so out of place. It's Shane Black. <laughs> he forces humor like wherever he goes. I don't know. Uh, he's given serious content. And he's just like jokes, jokes for everyone, jokes. And you're like, oh, okay. Uh, okay uh, he did it to Iron Man three when he shouldn't have, and he's doing it to Predator, which. I don't know, man. I remember the days when Predator wasn't a comedy, personally. Right? That's that's where I was. I, 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 the first movie. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the first film was 
the first film, the first half of the film at least, was pretty funny. Like when Arnold Schwarzenegger tries to pin the guy down, throwing his knife. I know it's just like, um, what did he, what did he say? I forgot what did he say. Um, stick around. <laughs> that's fucking. Oh hilarious. yeah, it's a one liner but... though. They're all over action <laughs> movies, and obviously it, that's when it's an action movie. It turns into a horror movie. He doesn't do one liners at that point, aside from saying yeah, he's an ugly it, motherfucker. It, it... Yeah, they establish it as an action movie first before it actually turns to a horror film. It's I mean, subversive. It got, ain't got no time. Ain't got no time to bleed. <laughs> that's just a fantastic line. Um, but yes, so that's still coming, and I think I'm, yeah, I have to do an update for that tomorrow on Patreon. Those those are those are free, and they're more detailed. They'll be able to get you more of a like idea of how much progress has been made. Uh, watch Maul vs. Obi Wan and Rebels. Any more unbridled rage? Yeah, I'm, I'm almost, judging from what YMS has said and, and the trailers and the leaked script, I'm pretty sure Predator is going to be terrible, so you can oh, bet I'll be making a video on that because Predator is one of my favorite films of all time, so we're going we're gonna to be dealing with a that. shitty Predator. Um, that'll probably be like Wait, a week a after I see super it. Chats. There are a couple more super chats where you're talking. Well, I was going to say, uh, they, they want a quick update with what went wrong with Jared. Um, that's at the beginning of this video, but I suppose we could bookend it. Do you want to do a quick explanation yeah. again, Wolf? Yes. Okay. So Jared lost his mind, whatever there was to lose, and deleted his channel because he didn't think that there was enough 32-year-old men such as himself who were just like him because apparently he thought every one of his fans were Minecraft fanboys and yeah. children. I don't know where he and got that. No, I don't know either. And he said he's a man of substance, which is true, but not in the sense that he wants it to be true. And he deleted his channel, made a new one, because he said he's okay with only having a few subscribers as long as they're just like him. So... There you have it. Yeah, and I'll he's... I'll still be covering uh, him on my channel, but we won't be doing it here. He said he didn't want to be a dear. meme, and he didn't, he didn't want to be... What was it? He didn't want to be a novelty, which... There's no way I could describe him as anything else on this channel. He's absolutely a novelty. But I thought that it was a relationship that he could definitely benefit from because he was getting a lot of subscribers and there were people in there that actually cared about what he had to say. So I figured, why wouldn't he want that? But he actually said something along the lines of, like, he was having to make stupid videos. But, like, mm. nobody asked for the one where he was in a thong dancing. <laughs> I don't think anyone asked for it anyway. It was a bit weird. Um, I mean, I don't think anyone's ever asked to make a video in his life. So... <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jared's just naturally kind of makes the worst content on YouTube, or at least worst from a certain point of view. Best if you're on this podcast and, and you're laughing at it. And he will still be covered on on Wolf's podcast, and I think it'll be amusing to see how the Actbad reacts to a to a Jared. <laughs> oh, God, you yeah. got you got to pick the best Jared video. I don't even know what you're gonna. Have you got any idea what you're gonna go with? Or I gotta find a new that, one that, because that, he deleted his whole fucking that, channel. <laughs> you remember that purple haired? Fair chick, like the fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> Jared, <laughs> forever in our memories. <laughs> Press um, F for Jared. But yes, that's that is it, I suppose. Um, it's it's been a lot of fun. Again, you can find this on my second channel if you really want it. This video, because it, it's it's absolutely been terrible, but um, I've had a lot of fun. So, I suppose it's yeah. time to say goodbye, folks. Yay! Just like completely ruined the tone of the ad, which is like, <sighs> well, I have to. I've been doing. True. I gotta stay consistent. I'm more consistent than Patrick Willems. I can say that at least. True. Um. But yes. Goodbye, everyone. Yep. It's been fun. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs>